Our speedy, we do it all. Have you heard what happened to those with curious minds? They packed up, broke free of conventions. These prospectors of knowledge are blazing a new trail, joining the long line of those who sought adventure and prepared for anything. This is the time. This is the place. Bring forth a pioneer. It's football season, and CAS Cable has a deal for new customers that's a real touchdown. Right now, new customers can buy one month of internet service from CAS Cable and get a second month free. Rush to our website for details today. Tackle high prices with internet service from CAS Cable. What was that? Too many football references? Healthy relationships, it's how we think about primary care at Camden Clark. When you choose one of our providers, you're starting a relationship with access to award-winning specialty care, diagnostics, and MyWVU chart. Our state-of-the-art user-friendly electronic medical records that's at your fingertips. Caring for you for over 125 years, we're the only local community health care providers backed by the power of WVU medicine. Healthy relationships start here. Carl's Pawn Shop is the first in the area to have the newest technology for evaluating precious metals. Yes, we're forging ahead of the pond industry with state-of-the-art equipment which measures actual content in precious metals. When looking at jewelry or coins, we can tell you exactly what metals are in the items and it's worth. Carl's has been a trusted source for buying and selling items and making loans for over 25 years. Stop in and see us at 3410 Emerson Avenue or 515 Division Street in Parkersburg. Carl's Pawn Shop. The Corner Cafe in downtown Parkersburg, next to Matheny Motors, has you covered for every meal of the day. Open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., seven days a week. You can enjoy our full menu whenever you want. Burger for breakfast, omelet for dinner. You can have it at the Corner Cafe. Enjoy our dinner specials like meatloaf, baked steak, and open face roast beef sandwiches. Top off your meal with homemade desserts, including our wide selection of pies. We hope to see you soon at the Corner Cafe, 3rd and Ann Streets in downtown Parkersburg, next to Matheny Motors. You don't have to go back to the dealer or travel hours to get professional maintenance and repair for your foreign auto. Cornerstone Auto Service is fully equipped with dealer level equipment and the expertise to provide you with the same quality repairs you receive from the dealer at a fraction of the cost. From expert diagnostics to routine maintenance, Cornerstone provides honest answers and quality service. Professional. Reliable. Affordable. That's the team at Cornerstone Auto Service. Camden Avenue, Parkersburg. All our dogs agree, Crazy Bone Pet Spa is the place to be. Our boarding is leading the pack with clean, spacious suites and plenty of fun and playtime to go around. Doggy daycare is a blast, too. All day fun with their friends is just what they need. Plus, they get to enjoy Crazy Bone's indoor play zone and turf outdoor play area, which means fun in the sun and no muddy paws if it's a rainy day. Don't forget to spoil them with treats, toys, and bling in our fully stocked lobby or maybe a day of beauty in our award-winning grooming salon. Crazy Bone Pet Spa, the fun place for your pet. Thank you, CIS Cable, for supporting Williamstown Cross Country. I'm Rick Derubis from the Adelphia Summer Concert Series, and I want to thank CAS Cable for being our partner. Thank you, CAS Cable, for the continued support of the PHS Big Red Marching Band. Let Sir Speedy take your project from idea to execution. Large and small, simple to complex, top-notch printing, custom signage, or a direct mail marketing campaign, the professionals at Sir Speedy are here to help. You'll always get the quality products, personalized service, and experience you've come to expect. So bring us your challenges and we'll work with you to solve them. We're your local resource for creative solutions. Beautiful, inventive, smart, everything you need. At Sir Speedy, we do it all.
And a very pleasant good afternoon from Don Drum Stadium on the campus of Marietta College. Welcome to CAS 45's coverage of Marietta College football. Back for another season, Brian Noss along with the coach Kevin Copley. And Kevin, your maiden voyage here at Marietta College. Welcome and glad to have you with us. Thank you, it's good to be here. Uh, uh, go ahead. Being from the, the, from the Valley, it's good to be back. Now you've had uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of coaching experience as well. Now, uh, Kevin, a, a former high school coach, former college coach, you're familiar with Division Three football and especially the Ohio Athletic Conference. Um, two ball clubs going in different directions today. Otterbein coming in, they haven't won a game yet. Marietta coming off that game against Mount Union. What did you see there with the Pioneers when they played uh, the Purple Raiders last week? Well, I thought the Pioneers played Mount Union very tough, or as good as Mount Union usually is. Um, they ran the ball pretty well um, and, and controlled the game for the most part. Um, they just made too many mistakes yeah. from what I saw on the film. So if you're Otterbein now, you come in and you've got a brand new coach, Tommy Zagorski is his first year, 0-3, and, and he lost a lot of kids too. When, uh, when he, he came in, he only had 50 kids. And so he did some heavy recruiting. How do you approach this game from a coaching standpoint if you're Coach Zagorski? Well, I think he's got to take away the run game from Marietta. I think that's their strength. Um, so he's got to control the line of scrimmage, try to keep them, keep them down as much as they can, you know, as, as much as they can control them, um, and, and you know, limit the mistakes for themselves and get off to a faster start. They've been getting off to a slow start uh, for the first three games of the season. Marietta coming in, of course, one and one. The first game of the year, they beat St. John Fisher uh, in that ball game, 31 to seven. Again, we talked about uh, Mount Union last week, so they're going to try and right the ship today and, uh, and go to two and one uh, after this uh, after this ball game today. Andy Waddle, the head coach, of course, coming in his 11th season with the Pioneers. And Saturday, of course, marks this Saturday marks the fourth week of uh, the 2023 season and the third week of Ohio Athletic Conference play. Pioneers, as we said, ranked uh, uh, are at one and one overall following their loss last week to uh, Mount Union. Otterbein, we've said 0 and 3 as they uh, uh, have played every game at home this year. This is their first year on our first week on the road. We talked to Andy Waddle just a little while ago, and uh, we're going to take a break and we'll come back with the Andy Waddle show. You're watching Marietta College Football on CAS 45, presented by Sir Speeding in Parkersburg. Stay with us. We're coming back. Let Sir Speedy take your project from idea to execution. Large and small, simple to complex, top-notch printing, custom signage, or a direct mail marketing campaign, the professionals at Sir Speedy are here to help. You'll always get the quality products, personalized service, and experience you've come to expect. So bring us your challenges and we'll work with you to solve them. We're your local resource for creative solutions. Beautiful, inventive, smart, everything you need. At Sir Speedy, we do it all. Have you heard what happened to those with curious minds? They packed up, broke free of conventions. These prospectors of knowledge are blazing a new trail, joining the long line of those who sought adventure and prepared for anything. This is the time. This is the place. Bring forth a pioneer. Halloween season is almost here, so creep on in to Crown Decor and Gifts for a frightfully and ghastly array of Halloween decor and gifts. Our dreadful assortment of decor ranges from vintage inspired to whimsical, and it's the perfect fit for your spectacular decorating plans. Don't forget to drag yourself to the Crown Confectionery for a buffet of ghoulish sweets and treats and dreadful edibles. Creep on in to Crown Decor and Gifts and see why we love Halloween. And welcome back to your spectacular happy place. Rivertown Grill in Williamstown is now open for lunch on Saturdays and Sundays. Enjoy your meal and warm weather on our outdoor patio. We have all your lunch favorites, like sandwiches, salads, wings, burgers, and more. Be sure to follow us on Facebook for our weekly food specials. Join us soon for lunch on Saturday and Sunday at Rivertown Grill in Williamstown. All right, welcome back to Dondrum Stadium. Brian Nost and Andy Waddle, the Andy Waddle Show. And, Coach, uh, coming off a, um, a a tough loss last week against Mount Union, but you guys stayed with them. You played very well. You had to be proud of your guys. Uh, I mean, our, our guys gave gave a great effort. Uh, I mean, honestly, there were plays there to be had. We, we uh, 
know, throw an interception at our own six yard line. We miss a, a field goal. There were a couple other questionable things that just didn't go our way. So we're disappointed that we weren't able to come away with the victory. But you know, our guys played hard and and uh, put forth a good fight. And you know, you always want to start with that. You are uh, one and one coming into this uh, fourth week here. Obviously, you had the bye week in week two. What do you like about your kids right now, your guys right now, and and where you're at? You know, I tell you, this is probably one of the tightest, uh, most enjoyable teams that I've ever been around. Uh, they just they like each other. They they uh, hang out together. You know. Freshmen and seniors are, are hanging out and, and offensive and defensive guys. And it's been a really good group and a fun group to be around. And so I think you start there. Obviously, when you look at us physically, you know, I think that uh, defensively our, 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 our defensive line is, is, is a pretty good unit, a really good unit, I think. Um, you know, we have some, some skill on the offensive skill side with our running backs and our receiver combos. And um, you know, I think that we've got a, a solid team everywhere, though. As a coach, um, how do you prepare your guys for a game like this? So let's go back. You play Mount Union last week, who everybody knows how good Mount Union is. Then you come up to this, come into this week, and you've got a team like Otterbein who struggled out of the gate. They're zero and three. They haven't gotten a victory. So you've got two extremes. Do you prepare the same way for both ball clubs, or or how do you look at today? Yeah, I mean, it, our, our approach is as coaches is very similar. We're we're trying to look at. You know what problems they're going to cause us with their their defensive schemes, fronts, uh, you know, blitzes, you know, et cetera, and offensively formations, plays, that that type of thing. So we look at it from from that side, and then um, you know, from the the mental side. I mean, we really we we trying to go out and find ways to to win both games, and um, we understand that uh, you know we can play with anybody, but we're not so elite that other teams can't play with us. Um, you know, these guys have some good, talented players. Um, they're not as deep as what Mount Union is, maybe not as experienced as what Mount Union is, but they're certainly a, uh, a group that has some talent and, and can cause you problems if we're not executing at a high level. So you don't sleep on them at all today? <laughs> we don't sleep on anybody. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, we're just, no, no. Uh, you know. I knew uh, you'd say that. I yeah, set you up. No, 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 no. We, we, we're preparing, um, you know, for a – a game to go into the fourth quarter and um, you know hopefully we'll be able to come out with with enough good things to, to win a game three games under your belt how healthy are you you know in football there's always injuries uh, you know we're lucky we're gonna get our tight end back who was an all-conference player last year hasn't played for us yet uh, one of our tackles um, you know probably not gonna start but is gonna play today this will be his first time that he's played a senior um, you know who's had a broken hand but we have started to, you know, amass some other injuries at some other places. So you're never healthy after uh, the first day of camp. But um, but that's that's college football. Everybody's dealing with it, and you know we have depth for a reason. Well, Andy, best of luck to you today as you uh, try to come out of here uh, two and one, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Absolutely, go Pios. Thanks a lot. All right, that's Andy Waddle. Stay with us. We'll come back with the kick. Myself and Kevin Copley going to bring it to you on CAS 45. You're watching Marietta College Football on CAS 45. We're coming back right after this. Let Sir Speedy take your project from idea to execution. Large and small, simple to complex, top-notch printing, custom signage, or a direct mail marketing campaign, the professionals at Sir Speedy are here to help. You'll always get the quality products, personalized service, and experience you've come to expect. So bring us your challenges and we'll work with you to solve them. We're your local resource for creative solutions. Beautiful, inventive, smart, everything you need. At Sir Speedy, we do it all.
Thank you, CAS Cable, for supporting PHS Wrestling. Thank you to CAS Cable for your amazing support of the Marietta Riverfront Roar 2023. Without your support, we wouldn't have been able to do it. Thank you, CAS Cable, for your continued support of the Williamstown Basketball Club. Welcome back to Don Drum Stadium on the campus of Marietta College. Just a couple of minutes here away from kickoff, Brian Austin, Kevin Copley bringing you Marietta College football presented by Sir Speedy in Parkersburg on CAS 45. And uh, Kevin Captain's out at uh, midfield right now and doing the coin toss. Marietta coming into this ball game, um, again, averaging uh, um, uh, not, uh, I, you know, it's, it's uh, let me back up and say it's it's a tale of two ball games, you know, 31 to seven against St. John Fisher, and then they don't put any points on the board last week. So it's kind of an anomaly. They're a better offense than what they showed last week. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, when you tell me you're playing one of the best teams in the country and they kind of shut you down offensively, it's going to hurt your average of, of passing, rushing, whatever you, whatever you have. Um, but I think they're a much better team than what their statistics show, and um, I'm sure they're going to have a much better game today. Marietta's won the toss. They have deferred to the second half when they get uh, the ball on offense. Uh, Bryce Agnew, the all-world uh, running back for the Pioneers, he's uh, 36 uh, attempts this year for 131 uh, uh, gross yards 119 net so he's averaging only 59 and a half yards a game but we've seen Agnew go over 3,000 or over a thousand yards in uh, his previous seasons he, you know he, he'll make things happen when he gets the football yeah he's an excellent runner and he's got a great offense line up front in front of him and open up those holes but again you know last week Mount Union you know did a good job of controlling their their defensive front and uh, limited his his options and limited his uh, his carries when Marietta uh, has the football, their quarterback, of course, they're led by senior Connor Veerstra, 152.9% uh, quarterback efficiency rating. He's 30 of 43 on the year. He's got a pick. He's also thrown two touchdowns. He's thrown for 371 yards and 185 yard average. And again, when you're talking about uh, the, the, um, the, the likes of Bryce Agnew, you don't really need to throw the football a lot, uh, does Marietta, but they, they can when they have to. Uh, if, if Agnew's not hitting on all cylinders. When, and their receivers, Dawson Snyder is leading the team with, uh, 145, or with 145 yards um, on 13 receptions on the year and uh, a couple of touchdowns. And the only two touchdowns that Beerstra has thrown this year have been to Dawson Snyder. Yeah, that, you know, the passing game is, is set up by the run game, obviously. Right. Um, you know, with their run game, that, that really opens it up. Yeah. and that uh, the defensive team's got to put a lot more guys in the box to take care of uh, their run game for Marietta. So we're just about ready to get things started as the Pioneers come out of the tunnel and they're going to kick things off. Otterbein will start on offense, so Marietta will get the ball uh, starting in the second half. Otterbein is led by their quarterback, Eason Hardwin. He's averaging 164 yards a game passing. He's 39 of 71 on the year with four interceptions. And he was a game time decision today. And I'm assuming we're going to see him, Kev, because um, we heard last week that he got hurt, but we saw him in warms up, warm ups. He looked pretty good. Yeah, he was warming up. He looked he looked like he was throwing the ball fine. Um, so we'll see if he's uh, if he's out there and the game starts. It's going to be interesting to see two of the battle of special teams out here. Watching both kickers before the game, both of, both of them seem like they uh, have very good legs, and that'll also be you know crucial part of today's game's battle field position. So we are set to go here for today's ball game, kicking off for Marietta at number eight, Matthew Gossett, back deep for Otterbein is going to be number four, AJ Cody, and also number twenty-four, Randy Cochran Jr. And a nice boot by Gossett. We'll send it into the end zone, so Otterbein will come out first and 10 and start at their own 25-yard uh, line. It's always a big, big asset to have somebody can put it in the end zone in college. Defensively for Marietta, across the front, Malik Melton, Isaiah McCartney, Chance Knight, and Jake Viznick. Key thing for the Pioneers right now is getting them off the field, three and out. 
Audubon's a really slow starting team, so we'll see what ha what happens here on the first drive. And it indeed is Hadwin, the quarterback. He wants to throw right away, and right away he's got a man for a five-yard gain to the far side. A yeah, nice quick little out route right there. The Pioneers did a nice job of coming up and rallying the tackle, and we got a man down. Yeah, that's Gavin Edwards. He's the guy that caught the pass, and he was kind of drilled into the ground. He got up, seems like he's okay. Holding that right shoulder a little bit. So I was generous. I thought five yards. They gave him three on the play, so it'll be second down and seven. Yeah, it was a nice, it was a nice throw. I mean, it was a good timing route, but uh, you know they got minimal gain on that. So hard when your quarterback AJ Cody is the sidecar out of the shotgun. Three wide receivers to the right, one in motion. Hardwin wants to throw again, and he throws it to the tight end. Pass is caught. Just but short of the first, I think. Freshman tight end Vincent Berardi, he was the man in motion. Yeah, again, did, you know, Pioneers did a nice job of rallying up and making a nice tackle on the sideline. Another quick little route route. So four wide receivers in the set, two to the top, two to the bottom, and the sidecar is now in motion. That is Cody. Cody coming to the near side. Third and three for the Cardinals. And Cody will line up at the bottom of your screen as a wide receiver. Hardman, Hardman wants to throw, and his intended receiver was Declan Jewett. That ball was nowhere close, so Marietta does a nice job there, Kev, on defense. And, will force a punt here early. Yeah, they went to the nickel defense right there, um, expecting pass, and um, they played it pretty well, dropped in the zone on the bottom side here. So they did exactly what they wanted to do, three plays and out and get them off the field. Dawson Snyder back at his 32-yard line to receive the punt and the punting duties for um, Otterbein go to Aiden Snyder, and he's standing at uh, his 17 yard line. Snyder under a bit of a pressure, doesn't get off a very good punt, but it does take a Cardinals bounce, rolls inside the 35 and it'll be touched dead at the 32 yard line. So Marietta will start first and 10, pretty decent field position. Yeah, it's about a 35 yard punt. Got a, got a generous roll. It was uh, probably about 20 something in the air, but they, Pioneers brought some pressure on that. They got close to blocking it. Pioneers led by their quarterback, senior Connor Veerstra. Veerstra out of uh, Westerville, Ohio, or Thornville, Thornville, Ohio, rather, Lakewood High School. Should see a big dose of Agnew right here. Pistol formation for the Pioneers. They'll bring a man in motion across the front. That is Dre Baldwin, and they give it to Bryce Agnew. Agnew hits soon as he touches the ball, and he'll get back to the original line of scrimmage, and that's about it. It'll be second down. Cardinals did a nice job right there of closing down the hole, came up, rallied, and uh, linebackers did a nice job filling right there, stopped him for no game. Agnew, 5'9", 215-pound senior, and they'll need him to do something good here today to take the pressure off the passing game. Trips to the bottom and they give it to Agnew again. Agnew fights his way ahead to the 35 yard line. So it'll be third and long for the Pioneers. Nice job on the interior line there for uh, the Cardinals. Yeah, they just, Pioneers ran a trap play right there and, and uh, the linebacker again came up and filled B gap and, and got what, three, two yards, two, three yards yeah, there. Yeah, about two and a half yards. So it's gonna be third and a long eight, short eight, long seven. So we'll see Veerstra throwing here for the first time with five wide receivers and they send Agnew back now into the backfield. Veerstra, straight drop, has time, throws, has a man. That's Baldwin at the 38 and he's gonna be well short of the first down is Dre Baldwin, his fourth catch of the year. It was a great tackle, great open field tackle by, by the Cardinals. They came up, wrapped up chest to chest, just like you teach it. Stopped them. They got three and out as well. Get them off. They're getting off the field as well. So slow start from both offenses, but the defenses are playing pretty well. Carlos Alamo 
is the um, try to remember that, Kevin, the Alamo. Get it? Remember I got it? You. See what I did remember there? Remember the Alamo. He's standing at his 30 yard line and a great punt. Fair catch all the way back to the 16. And a great job there by Aiden Bailey. Yeah, and almost I was watching the I was watching the Pioneers punter. He did a nice job of getting good hang time. He did last week too against Mount Union. He uh that, and that helps the return, I mean excuse me, helps the um, the punt team get down there and cover. So the uh, Otterbein Cardinal will come back out for their second possession. And again, a real nice punt there from Marietta. Looks like this, this series are going four man front, going to a four three defense. AJ Cody in the backfield, man in motion. And Hadwin gives him the ball and Cody is wrapped up immediately at the 15, it falls on the ground and Marietta may have it. And they do. Pioneers recover. Up 21, covers the fumble. Brady Panucci for the Pioneers and uh, just like that, momentum shift, Kevin. Marietta's in a, a great spot here, first and 10 at the 15. Well, defensively as a coordinator, that's what you want. You want to get uh, get some turnovers, give your offense great field position. So they got a short field to work with right here. Um, and we'll see if they can punch it in and capitalize on that mistake that uh, the Cardinals gave them. First and 10, Marietta, the ball is at the 15 yard line. Two wide receivers in the set. We've got a tight end and Agnew is in the backfield. Out of the pistol formation, they give it to Bryce Agnew. No, rather, Fierster keeps it and Fierster goes into the end zone. Touchdown, Marietta. And Fierster takes his helmet off. I don't see any laundry on that. That's a no-no, right, Kevin? You're not supposed to take your helmet off. definitely a no-no. I don't know if he took it off or if he got knocked off. Well, well, not quite sure, but anyway, it was a great run. And I'll tell you, it fooled me. I was looking at the running back well, myself. Yeah, me too. I mean, so uh, I'm glad I'm not the only ding dong here that called that play because I, I couldn't. Uh, it was a great fake. It was. Matthew great Johnson. fake. And, he uh, sold it. Beers to, uh, kept, uh, called his own number, took it into the end zone. Marietta up six to nothing with 11.39 to go in this first quarter. That was definitely quick and efficient. Gossett on the extra point, and with 11.39 to go in the uh, first quarter, Marietta leads it 7 0. We'll take a break. We're coming right back. You're watching Marietta College Football presented by Sir Speedy Printing in Parkersburg on CAS 45. Let Sir Speedy take your project from idea to execution. Large and small, simple to complex, top-notch printing, custom signage, or a direct mail marketing campaign, the professionals at Sir Speedy are here to help. You'll always get the quality products, personalized service, and experience you've come to expect. So bring us your challenges, and we'll work with you to solve them. We're your local resource for creative solutions. Beautiful, inventive, smart, everything you need. At Sir Speedy, we do it all. Welcome back to Marietta College. And six to nothing, our score, the extra point uh, was wide left from Gossett. Hopefully it doesn't come back to bite him later. Cody back the other way on the return. AJ Cody out across the 25 to the 27 yard line. That's scoring play, Kevin. Got a flag too. Got a penalty flag on the sideline. On the far side. That scoring play, by the way, one play, 15 yards, nine seconds. It's Veerster, a 15 yard run. And the Gossett kick, of course, was wide left. So um, Marietta off to a, uh, a decent uh, start after that turnover. Let's see what the flag's all about now. They got the guys talking about it on the far side. <laughs> Not sure if it was a late hit. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit, defense number 33. That's usually what it is when it's done at that time. First down, so they call that on Anthony Sabatino, a late hit after the play was over. So a break there for the Cardinals, and they get great field position to start their second drive of the game. That's some things that uh, the Pioneers had happen to them last week with some penalties at some crucial times. So. Hopefully they'll clean that up. Tyreek Gannell is in the backfield now replacing AJ Cody. Four wide receivers and they give it to number seven, Gannell. 
defensive line is doing a nice job of shedding blocks right there. They're, they're, they're getting off their blocks and, and uh, making tackles. It's, it's going to be tough for Audubon to run, run up the middle. Check that. That's Jordan Bose Floyd, number seven, is the running right, back. Hopkins, Jake Vincent, My fault. On the stop. Jordan Bose seven Floyd. Now the Pioneers are going to a three-man front. Trips left to the top of your screen for Otterbein. Hardwin steps up in the pocket. He's under pressure and gets it off, but it's in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. You got to catch those kind of balls. That was a great play by the quarterback to elude the rush and to get the ball out and um, hit the receiver right in the hands. He needs to make that play. Yeah, Christian Pataki in and out of his hands, and he had a little bit of running room too, Kev. He could have uh, he did. I think he could, turned it upfield. I think he could have made a first down right there if he'd have caught it. So third and nine for the Cardinals, and again, Cody on the bench. After returning that kick, I don't know if he's hurt or what, but Floyd in the backfield. There's going to be a hole. This is going to, no matter what happens, it's coming back. Passes. Um, in and out of the hands of Jordan Boast Floyd, but it's going to be a hold. I think it was on number 73, Kev, Jacob Neary. Yeah. Yep. Pioneers doing a really good job, too, of um, disguising their coverages um, from man to zone to give the quarterback a little bit more to think about. So they're going to decline that, take the fourth down, get the ball back, go back to work. Aiden Snyder in punt formation. Dawson Snyder. Dawson Snyder for the Pioneers back at his 20-yard line, and doing the punting is Hayden Snyder for Otterbein. I'm guessing no relation. Snyder to Snyder. Good snap. Again, pressure by the Pioneers, but Snyder does get the kick off, and Dawson, Dawson will Snyder. corral it in at the 26-yard line, so Marietta will have their third possession of the afternoon. Of course, the second one resulted in that uh, Veerstra keeper, 15-yard touchdown. And the first possession, they went three and out. So let's see now if they can get their offense on track for a, an extended period of time. Well, they've gotten off to a pretty good start so far. Of course, the, the defensive turnover helped them get, that, get the last touchdown. Pistol formation for Marietta. Now they'll bring Agnew up as the sidecar. Beerstra, straight drop, has some time. Now he steps up. He's going to tuck it and run, and Beerstra close to the first down marker. Auburn did a good job that time. They went man to man, and, and really he had nowhere to go with the football, so he took off running and uh, got a first down. Did a good job. Good decision by the quarterback there. Vincent Fisher on the stop for the Cardinals. First down, Pioneers. Clock continues to run. 10-10 to go in the first quarter. Marietta leads it six to nothing. Man in motion was Witzberger, and this is going to be a free play here. Free play. And the pass is caught. That is Melchiori for the Pioneers. Inside the 15, down to the 11-yard line. Now I'm thinking this is an offside, so it's going to stand. The play, uh, they've already. Yep, that's going to stay. It's, uh, it's laying back here at the 39. That was a free play, and they connected and took advantage of it. We'll get the official word here from the White Hat, but uh, I'm thinking that that's exactly what happened. They drew them off sides. They jumped. And Veerster with that quick snap when he saw it, called for the ball immediately. Offside, defense number 15. A lot of times that inflection in the quarterback's voice will uh, distract those offense linemen and, or defense linemen, and they, uh, they just can't help themselves. <laughs> you try to teach your quarterbacks to do that. Some, some of them have a natural ability to do that, and some just, you know, some don't. But it seems like he does a pretty good job with his voice. Now, as a coach, how does that turn your hair gray? I mean, that's got to drive you nuts, right? As a defensive coach? Yeah. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> you do not. You do nothing but what you know. You're watching the football, not listening. Beerster coming up now and changing the play. 
at the line of scrimmage. And they give it to Agnew, left side. Agnew at the 10, and he's brought down. Gets maybe down to the nine yard line, falls back to the 10. Agnew, Defensive Jerry. front of Audubon's done a nice job. They really are. Um, that was just a zone play from, from the Pioneers. Um, they've got a body on a body, but you know linebackers are scraping and plugging, and they're, they're not giving him a whole lot of room right there. Across the front for Marietta is Braylon Adams, Corey Hart, Seth Wallace, David Bush, and Brady Shieldwalker. That's your front five for the Pioneers trying to create the holes for Agnew here this afternoon. Baldwin in motion. And they give it up the middle. That wasn't Baldwin, by the way. That was Dawson Snyder, my bad, in motion. And linebacker number 56 came up, made a nice, nice tackle on the edge right there. Zach Heimer on the stop. A couple of yards for Agnew. It'll bring up a third and seven for the Pioneers. Now they don't tend to go on fourth, four on fourth down a whole lot, so I'm curious to see if they don't get it here, what's, what they'll do. They bring two guys across in motion. That's Witzberger and Agnew now to the left side of the line. So they're stacked on the left side. And Beerstra is going to call his own number. And that's why they stacked it on the left side, because they created a lot of blockers on that left side. And Beerstra takes it in from eight yards out. Touchdown, Marietta. Yeah, Audubon didn't, didn't adjust to that. They uh, they got outnumbered on the left side. They had more bodies than, than, uh, than Audubon had on that side. Quarterback did a nice job. Got what he could get and got, got in the end zone. So right now, Beerster, the leading rusher for Marietta. Go figure, right, when you have somebody like Agnew in the backfield. Well, it's obvious that the Cardinals done their homework. So, they're, you know, they're trying to shut down the run game, but they're, the quarterback is still getting out. So Andy Waddle elects to not go for two to bring it to 14, but they do, do kick the extra point, does Matthew Gossett, and it makes it 13 to nothing. Our score, 750 to go. In the first, and you're watching Marietta College Football presented by Sir Speedy Printing in Parkersburg on CAS 45. We're coming right back. It's football season, and CAS Cable has a deal for new customers that's a real touchdown. Right now, new customers can buy one month of internet service from CAS Cable and get a second month free. Rush to our website for details today. Tackle high prices with internet service from CAS Cable. What was that? Too many football references? Thirteen to nothing. Our score: Brian Nosta and the coach Kevin Copley at Don Drum Stadium in Marietta, Ohio. Beerstra on an eight-yard run, adding that to his 15-yard run from uh, earlier. And Marietta leads it 13 to nothing. Yeah, Vichers had a Vichers had a 15-yard run and a seven-yard run. Um, so he, you know, he's been pretty much the running game so far. Uh, he scored with uh, five five for 73, two four one on the clock. Two minutes and 41 seconds on that drive. Fair catch called for. Fair catch Vincent called for Berardi. by Vincent Berardi. A little pooch kick there from Gossett. So. Cardinals will have decent field position. It's not like they're pinned way back in their own end. They'll start at the 25-yard line. They have got to make something happen on this drive. They don't want to get down three scores. This has been their nemesis the first three games, just not getting a good start. You mentioned it earlier, right? They're slow starters, unfortunately. AJ Cody back into the uh, ball game. And they hand the ball off to him. He'll go left side. Got a flag down. And somebody lost their lid. That may have been Cody. Taken by Cody. Flag on the play. No, that was number 59, Alex Padakey. And so he'll have to come out for a play. And you say there is a flag? Holding. Yes, sir. Offense, number 73. All right, so. Number 73 holding. Second penalty on 73 holding. So uh, Jacob Neary not, not having a good first quarter here. That's a line's a pretty, pretty good bunch of uh, bunch of guys there. They they're they're struggling blocking them, so you know they're trying to get every little advantage they can. Well, Malik Melton, Isaiah McCartney, Chance Knight, and Jake Visnick, veterans on that defensive line for Marietta, mm -hmm. getting 
getting the job done so far here early. Pioneers showing blitz. Pass out into the flat is caught. Number eight. Great catch. Good, good, good quick out route. Um, so far, the quarterback's got good timing on his on his throws. Gain of nine on the play. It's second and eleven. Hardwin, straight drop, looking over the middle, and has a man. Wow. What a great catch right there by Vincent Berardi. And he threaded the needle there, Kev. I don't know how he got that one in there, but he did. It was between four defenders, and he came up with the ball. That was a beautiful throw, and, and, the, and the tight end there made a nice catch in traffic. Marietta had that well defended, too. I, I, I really thought somebody was going to come up and make an interception there. Yeah, when I when I saw him throw it into triple coverage, I thought, well, surely we're going to at least get a pick out of this. And, and uh, lo and behold, the freshman tight end, Vincent Berardi, pulls it in. And hats off to Hardwin for, for hanging in there and, and putting it on the money. Yeah, that was a tremendous throw. AJ Cody, the ball carrier, and he's going to get stopped in the backfield. Super job there by Marietta covering swarm and defense there. Yeah, that was a, that's just the way you want to see it. You want to see a host of host of your defensive players come up making a tackle. Uh, you run to the football, you try to preach that and teach that every day. Brady Panucci on the stop, a little help from Malik Melton there as well. And after all that, it's only a loss of one, so it'll be second down and 11 for Otterbein. Four guys moving at once. I'm confused. I don't know about you, but they do have five wide receivers now, and Hardwin is all alone in the backfield. And it's oh. almost intercepted in and out of the hands of Brady McManaway. Yeah, he, he came up and made a nice break on the football right there on that little, little uh, hook pattern and really – Probably should have had a pick right there. I think, I think Brady was looking at the end zone going the other yeah. way, Kev. I think he probably would have had a pick six if he'd, yeah. have made, if he'd have made that catch. Oh, there's no question. But that was a tremendous breakup. That was, As I call it, that was a B play. That wasn't an A-plus play. <laughs> it's an A-plus if it's a pick if six. It's a pick right? six right there, yeah. Third and 11 for Otterbein. A.J. Cody on the draw. And a nice job by the Pioneers shutting that down. The Cardinals are struggling running the football. They, they, they're having some success throwing the ball, but they're really struggling against this front four, sometimes front three of the Pioneers, which hats off to them. They, they've done a nice job controlling that front line. And Audubon gets set to punt again. Harley Hopkins on the stop for the Pioneers, the uh, linebacker. Dawson Snyder, Dawson Snyder back, back at his 12-yard line. Is that Snyder and Snyder connection again? Aiden Snyder doing the punting for Otterbein. Marietta's been bringing pressure, but not this time, and Snyder gets it off. And Dawson comes up to the 25-yard line, Snyder. catches it on a run. That's always, that's got to be nerve-wracking when you got a guy that's coming into traffic trying to catch a punt. You got guys all around him, but a nice job by Dawson Snyder there focusing on the uh, on the football so Marietta has decent field position. Yeah, and that's you know that's crucial as a coach. You try to teach that honestly because um, if you let that ball roll, I don't know if you knew this or not, average roll on a punt 17.7 yards. Wow. So if you can come up and make a catch and you know a fair catch especially saves you two and a half uh, two and a half first downs you got to get. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I brought Kevin Copley into the broadcast. You don't get stats like that anywhere else, but right here. Get it from an ex-punter. <laughs> Agnew around the right side, and he's off to the races. He, ooh, thought he might have broke that tackle, but they got him down. Almost did. Bryce Agnew around the right side for his biggest gain of the day. Pioneers right now have got some momentum going and they're 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 capitalizing. They're going to go a little bit quicker tempo here, I think. And Wagner or Wagner Agnew is uh, getting some good direction. I got to I ran into Roger Walker, former All-World running back here for the Pioneers. He is now on staff as the running backs coach, 
and I don't know too many guys better than Walker to teach how to be a running back. And Agnew was already doing well, but it's good to see Roger back here in Marietta on staff. And uh, another nice gain there from uh, Bryce Agnew as he gets it down to the 33 yard line. Yeah, they run a power play off the right side and they did a nice job of uh, opening that hole up and staying on their blocks. Gave him a lot of room to run. Baldwin at the bottom, Snyder at the top, Agnew in the backfield. Out of the shotgun, Connor Veerstra wants to throw. And his receiver fell down. Tell you, he's got all day to throw the ball. They, they did not get any pressure up front. They're, they're, they're doing a decent job on the run up front, but they, are, they didn't get a whole lot of pressure on him right there. But the receiver falling down almost cost him. Well, you see Melchiori giving, giving Connor uh, Veerstra the thumbs up. He said that was on me. When he made his turn, when he, he did just a little, I guess they used to call it a button hook route. They just, he went down and he turned around and came back real quick. And when he did, he lost his footing yeah. and went down. Otherwise, that's probably a completion. So third and three now for Marietta. Play action over the middle, in and out of the hands. The intended receiver was Dawson Snyder. It was a good throw. Uh, it was right where it needed to be, but he was, you know, Cardinal defender was all over him as well. But, uh, you know. Flag down, too. Might have been pass interference a little bit. There is no foul for oh. offensive pass interference. Waved it off. The the that was good defense. I'm glad they picked that one up. I thought that was pretty good defense. Well, and they said that, that, that it was contemplating offensive pass interference uh -oh. there. So I didn't see that, but. So fourth and three, and Marietta's going to go for it here. Andy Waddle's going to roll the dice. The ball is at the 33-yard line. Very unusual. They don't go for one and fourth too often, but they're kind of a no man's land right here. Probably a little too far for a field goal and not going to get uh, all that much benefit out of the punt. And they're discussing the penalty or the spot. Shouldn't be the spot. Not sure what the officiating crew is discussing there. Well, after all that, Kev, I'm not sure what that was all about, but at any rate, it's fourth and three. I think they were talking about dinner plans. Maybe uh, I'm after not sure. Game, right? Gave Cardinals a little bit more time to get their defensive set. Three wide receivers to the bottom of your screen. Beerstra and Agnew side by side. And they'll give it to Bryce. He goes over the right side and Otterbein says, huh, uh They ran a nice cross stunt with their linebackers inside, which I think confused the offensive line a little bit and uh, left the linebacker coming Scott free to make the tackle, but still making a one-on-one -on -one tackle um, on Agnew's uh, tremendous feet. Yeah. But that's that stopped them. I mean, they did what they needed to do to get, uh, get Marriott off the field. Yeah, if you're looking for a little momentum there from uh, for Otterbein, that's it. I mean, that's a great stop because Marietta was certainly driving. Yes, sir. They're definitely knocking on the door. Go! Tight end in motion. That is Berardi, who's got a huge catch earlier. Hardwin throwing on the far side. There is a flag, and I'm not sure if that's an offensive pass interference. It looked like to me he might have pushed off to get that separation. Not sure. Armani Burton was the receiver, and we'll, I think you're right. I think there was a, a push off there because there was a lot of separation was, there, Kev. There was a lot of separation. Pass interference. Yep. Offense, yep. Eight, nice 15, call, Kev. 10, Good eyes. First down. I can still see far away. I can't see up close. <laughs> Decent sized crowd here at Don Drone today. It's uh, Pretty nice day for football, too. It's not real stinking hot like it has been. Yeah, actually, Audubon brought some people out before the game started. I didn't see anybody over there. They just kind of showed up. First and 25 now for the Cardinals. They've got to get to the 43-yard line. This is a situation they don't want to be in. No. 
hard one on the out route, and it's just too far for that's his intended receiver. That's uh, Declan Jewett. Jewett. That's a tough, tough throw from the opposite hash to get that on an out route. That's sometimes also where you get those pick sixes. He needs to be very careful to get that ball outside. And I'm guessing there, I'm guessing there aren't a lot of first and 25 plays in the playbook either. You know, I mean, so you gotta kind of take little chunks like that, and when you have the opportunity, you've got to make it count. And that was yeah. not not a real good throw from Hardwin there. At this point, they're probably just trying to get some decent field position to punt. A.J. Cody, the ball carrier, to the 18-yard line, so real basically to the line of scrimmage. Pioneers did a nice job there too. They they just they're, they're playing really tough up front. It's 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 tough sledding for that uh, running game for the Cardinals. So third and forever, they've got to get to the 43-yard line, and they're at the 18. So it's third and 25. So some times where you see a nice little screen pass. Draw. Don Nealon was always famous for that. Mm -hmm. When you were third in a week and a half, he'd run a draw play. Yep. Hardwin under pressure, and he goes down at the five-yard line. The Pioneers got in there. They were sending some people, and uh, Audubon just couldn't hold up. Harley Hopkins, the sophomore linebacker, put the pressure on, and Hardwin had nowhere to go but down. Now that puts their special teams in a tough, tough spot here. The punter standing in the back of the end zone. And the Pioneers are going to get, should get very good field position. This is also where sometimes you see, people would think that you would, uh, you know, go after and block this, but a lot of times you'll see them just get held up because you get a better return that way. Aiden Snyder in his end zone does get it off, and he does an Academy Award performance to try to say that he was roughed up, but it was right in front of the official. The official wasn't buying it. Yeah, they teach him to do that. He's, he's trying to help his team. Uh, goodness gracious. Wouldn't surprise me before too long, they don't make that a penalty, just like they do in basketball when they flop. Flop now, yeah. yeah. I, t I can't I can't hardly watch the NBA anymore. I mean, I don't, I don't think I've watched a full game since Jordan retired. Well, he was the GOAT. He was. Still tell LeBron that. First and 10, Marietta at the 31-yard line. They have set up shop in great field position. They'll bring Witzberger in motion across the line, and they'll give it right up the middle. And that is Zion Jackson Wilburn. Yeah, he had a nice run there. That was, that was a nice counter play. So he's giving Agnew a, a little breather. Cardinals are just on their heels a little bit here. They they need to get another stop and. and you know, First quarter kind of coming down, winding down. They need some positive momentum to go into the second quarter. Zion Jackson Wilburn, the sophomore out of Whitehall, Ohio, Reynoldsburg High School. Gain of nine on the play, coach. It's second and one. Snyder in motion, and they give it to him on the throwback, and Snyder's in. <laughs> He's in a world of hurt just trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I mean, different ways you can look at that. Second one, you know, do you get the first or you, you know, they went with the option. A lot of, a lot of uh, motion going the, the wrong direction. Wilburn comes off, Agnew back on. Loss of one on the play, it'll be third down and two for the Pioneers. Marietta in the pistol formation, Agnew in the backfield, and they'll give it, it's the fake, and it, in and out of the hands of Witzberger. They had the first. All he had, all he had to do was catch the ball, hit him right in the hands. Quarterback did a nice job on the play fake. He, I've really been impressed with his ball skills. He yeah. does a nice job of play action and uh, ball fakes when he's uh, pulling the ball from, from the running back. But. So fourth and two here, Kevin, and uh, Marietta has decided to try a field goal. It's going to be about 40 yards, right hash. Should be within range, not a gimme by any stretch, but. He had plenty of leg to get this one through in warm-ups. And the kick is up. 
and it is good from 40. Yeah, he had, he had leg to get that from 50, I think. He, he's got a pretty good leg. I was watching him kick and, and uh, do his warm-up routine. He's, a, he's got some ability uh, as a kicker. The freshman from Enon, Ohio, Greenan High School, six foot five, 170 pounds. Six foot five, he's got a lot of, a lot of leg. Yeah, you gotta wonder if, if uh, Coach John Vanderwall wants to look at him in the off season for uh, the men's basketball program. And as speaking of uh, John, we are going to uh, talk to him at halftime and I'm excited to, uh, to uh, get uh, reacquainted with uh, Coach V. It's, uh, it's been a while since we've gotten to talk to him. So we'll find out what's going on with Marietta College men's basketball coming up at halftime. But right now our score, Marietta 16 and Otterbein nothing. 12 seconds left to go here in the, um, in the first quarter. It was almost a victory for the Cardinals, I think, giving up a field goal, not a touchdown there. They could have yeah, very, especially they, with the starting field position. Yeah, they could have very easily done down another touchdown. So that defense bend, they, they bent but didn't break. AJ Cody back and Randy Cochran Jr. And Cody's going to be driven into his end zone, thinks about it, but says, nah. Smart decision. Yeah. Get the ball out mid to 20 yard line. And uh, let the offense do 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 the work. Uh, hopefully, you know, we'll see Audubon make a little bit of a run down the field. They haven't had a whole lot of opportunity past the 50. I don't think they haven't even been past the 50 yet, have they? I don't think so. And that one positive play they had on that tight end. Uh, pass to Berardi when he threw into triple coverage. That's been their biggest play of the afternoon. Yeah, they've, had some, they've had some success throwing the ball. He's got a nice arm. He's got some decent receivers. I have a feeling we're going to see a little bit more of that. Well, he's got four of them in there right now. Two at the top, two at the bottom. Or one at the bottom, actually one in the slot. And they throw the quick out, and it's uh, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. That's Owen Beebe. Yeah, good coverage was good there. Um, Pioneers were right there. Possibility of that been a catch, I and mean, the ball was there. It was a little high. Even if he catches it, it's maybe four yards. Yeah, it's it's not a big play. But you know, you gotta you gotta take them as you get. You gotta take, you know, bite the little chunks off. That's how you eat an elephant's one bite at a time, Ooh, right? Fall on that ball. That now they're gonna. He's calling incomplete. Did it? Okay. Well, you never want to guess. Defensively, you pick it up and you run with it. Make the make the official make that decision. Yeah, Anthony Sabatino uh, with the smart play, like you said, Kevin. He picks it up and and runs it until he's told otherwise. So we've run two plays and amassed six seconds on two incomplete passes here. So that's third the, and ten. That's the tough thing when you're you know a throw first team is the clock does not run very fast. Yeah. Hardwood, and he I was, don't know if that's a busted play right He did get a lot of pressure Yeah, there. he got a lot of pressure up front. And, um, he was right there, he's a big boy. He got in there and was right in his face. Did a good job pulling up too, because he could have very easily probably got a late hit on that one. And as they just pointed out in the truck, uh, they ran three plays in nine seconds, all passes, three, three seconds of play. Doesn't do a, a whole lot of uh, benefit to your time of possession. No, that's for sure. And they actually had done pretty well in the, in the previous games of time of possession. Now he finally gets off a good punt, turns over. And Dawson Snyder coming back the other way. Snyder at the 50, turns the corner of the 45, run out of bounds at the 41 yard line, and that will bring an end to the first quarter. Our score after one quarter of play, Marietta 16 and Arbine nothing. You are watching Marietta College Football presented by Sir Speedy Printing in Parkersburg on CAS 45. Have you heard what happened to those with curious minds? They packed up, broke free of conventions. These prospectors of knowledge are blazing a new trail, joining the long line of those who sought adventure and prepared for anything. This is the time. This is the place. Bring forth a pioneer. It's football season, and CAS Cable has a deal for new customers that's a real touchdown. 
Right now, new customers can buy one month of internet service from CAS Cable and get a second month free. Rush to our website for details today. Tackle high prices with internet service from CAS Cable. What was that? Too many football references? Welcome back to Don Drum Stadium on the campus of Marietta College. One quarter of play under our belt, and it's Marietta 16 and Otterbein nothing. Kevin will go over first half statistics here in just a second, but right now Marietta with the football in good field position at their 43, at the Cardinal 43. Beerstra over the middle, he's got a man, and with the catch is Tony Anthony. Freshman wide receiver. So, so far, Marietta's got 88 rushing yards, and Audubon's got 11. Wow. Passing yards, 57 for Marietta, 42 for Audubon. And 40, 42 of those, about 40 of those came on that one play, that one right? One play, yeah. Total offensive plays, 45 for Marietta, or excuse me, yardage, 145 for Marietta, 31 wow. for Audubon. Not wow. a whole lot of offensive production. Beerstra with the delayed handoff to Agnew. Agnew across the 35 down to the 32 yard line. That'll be a first down Pioneers and they move the sticks. Surprisingly time of possession, 7.54 for Marietta and 7.06 for Otterbein. Wow. And that was with the, with the nine second drive. Yeah. Wow. But they did have that short field down here uh, off the turnover True. too. That does skew the statistics a little bit. First to 10 Pioneers, ball at the 32 yard line. Play action, Beerstra wants to throw, he's got a man down the middle! Touchdown, Marietta! Nope. Waved it off. They waved it off. Don't tell the Cannon guy that. Thought he had it, but I don't think he could maintain possession. John Sierptowski was the intended receiver you know, looking at these statistics again, they've got Agnew averaging 6.9 yards per rush right now. Sierra Patowski had it and then didn't. But he was wide open, wasn't he? He was. He, he got behind and actually had to wait on the ball a little bit. Ball was a little bit underthrown. And you called it. I thought you were going to come out of your skin there because yeah. you're, you're like waiting for the ball to get there. And it was just a little late. I think the receiver was waiting for the ball to get there too. Kind of a busted play in the backfield, and Agnew is going to be wrapped up and pushed out of bounds. Yeah, they did a nice job there. That <clears throat> not a well blocked. I think somebody missed their assignment on the left side there. But uh, they definitely stopped him for a loss. No. Third and 13 now for Marietta. He did lose three on the play. It's back to the 35 yard line. Now they're in a situation too where, you know, probably in four down territory here. It's a little too far for a field goal and they're not definitely not gonna punt in this situation. So they need to take, you know, what they can get. Two in the slot, one at the top, one at the bottom of your screen as far as receivers go. Veerstra, two step drop and his receiver fell down. There's a flag on the play and it's gonna be picked off. Now, whether or not it will stand, I'm not sure there was, if there wasn't pass interference there, Kevin, as to why the receiver went down, we'll see. Yeah, I think it was pass interference. It looked like they at least bumped him. I don't know how badly they bumped him, but if he did fall down, I think it may have looked worse than it was. But that's gonna be the call as pass interference. All right, so it's not a pass interference, it's a defensive holding. It's a hold. And that's prior to the pass, so that's only five yards, right? I believe so, yes. But it is a first down. Wouldn't be if it's five. Isn't it an automatic or no? I don't. Uh, well, they're moving the chain, so I guess you're right. Of course I'm right. You're always right. <laughs> yeah, it's only a five yard penalty, but it is an automatic first down when it's defensive holding on a pass. So. First down Marietta, ball is at the 25 yard line, so the drive stays alive after the penalty. Pistol formation for Marietta. Veerstra hands the ball off to Agnew. He goes right up the middle, and Bryce Agnew with some positive yards inside the 20, down to the 18 yard line. 
you know, the Cardinals are trying to do some stunting up front with their linebackers and their D-line, and I think sometimes, you know, if you guess right, you're good. If you don't guess right, you're not. And I think that time they 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 uh, left the gap where Agnew was going. He went right off the B gap on the right side, and the linebacker crossed on the other side. 12.05 on a running clock in the first half. Marietta leads it 16 to nothing, and they are driving second and three from the 18-yard line. Agnew, left side. Bryce Agnew still on his feet inside the five-yard line. It's hard to bring that, like, that guy down, man. Tremendous run. But, I, you know, you got to give credit to the guys up front. That was a power play. Tight end came down. The wing came down. They pulled two guys off the offensive line and kicked out. <clears throat> and then get the power of Agnew running. They have a hard time bringing him down, like you said. First and goal from the three for Marietta. Let's see if Veerstra calls his own number. Nope, he'll give it to Agnew, and he stopped at the five-yard line. He'll lose a couple. Didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Nice penetration there by Otterbein. Yeah, they, have, they have not been as successful running that zone play as they have been running um, trap and power. Two. Lost two yards Second on that one. Yep. Second and goal from the five. <laughs> this will be a tremendous blow to Otterbein if they can punch it in here. Agnew, handoff right up the middle. He's back to the original line of scrimmage. He may have got a head down to the two-yard line. Yeah, looks like it's going to be third and two. Now the question is, if they don't get it on third down, do they kick another field goal or do they go for it? I would think you'd have to go for it down here. Eli Rich comes off. Sear Patowski checks in for Andy Waddle. And they'll do a check. At the line of scrimmage, Beerstra gets the play call. Five seconds on the play clock, and they'll give it to Agnew. Right up the middle, touchdown, Marietta. They're not going to take that one off the board. No, sir. That was a well-blocked um, sort of counter play. Watch it right here again on replay. Big 72. Wow, that was a... Nobody touched him until he crossed no, the goal line. No, they did not. They got big on big, as they call it right yeah, there. Yep. Yeah. So Garrett on to attempt the uh, extra point, or Gossett, rather, on to attempt the extra point. And the kick is up, and it is no good. So he's missed, uh, two. missed two today. That's not, that's not good. So our score with 10.03 to go in the first half, Marietta 22, Otterbein nothing. You're watching Marietta College Football presented by Sir Speedy Printing in Parkersburg on CAS 45. Healthy relationships, it's how we think about primary care at Camden Clark. When you choose one of our providers, you're starting a relationship with access to award-winning specialty care, diagnostics, and my WVU chart. Our state-of-the-art user-friendly electronic medical records that's at your fingertips. Caring for you for over 125 years. We're the only local community health care providers backed by the power of WVU Medicine. Healthy relationships start here. Carl's Pawn Shop is the first in the area to have the newest technology for evaluating precious metals. Yes, we're forging ahead of the pawn industry with state-of-the-art equipment which measures actual content in precious metals. When looking at jewelry or coins, we can tell you exactly what metals are in the items and its worth. Carl's has been a trusted source for buying and selling items and making loans for over 25 years. Stop in and see us at 3410 Emerson Avenue or 515 Division Street in Parkersburg. Carl's Pawn Shop. Good old Carl Balderson, man. Carl's Pawn Shop. Miss that guy. What a great dude. We lost him way too soon. Marietta kicking off. A.J. Cody takes it at the six-yard line. He'll come up the left side, try to cut inside to the middle, and Marietta does a great job, Coach, in stuff in the middle right there. They he, they swarmed him, and you know, Otterman initially blocked him, blocked him well. Um, they shed the blocks, and they they did a nice job of gang tackling right there. They get the ball in about the 19. Kevin, that scoring drive. What do you got for me? 
Get a Bryce Agnew two-yard run. Um, Matthew Gossett kick failed. Nine plays, 43 yards, four minutes, 57 second drive. It's a nice little chunk of time off the clock yeah. there for Marietta. Yeah, that kind of uh, that not skewed the time of possession overall, 12 minutes to seven minutes. That was a nice drive. All right, so Otterbein takes over. Ball at the 20-yard line. Hard one, wants to throw, has a man wide open. There's that tight end. And a great pitch and catch to Vincent Berardi out to the 50-yard line. That was a well-run play. They ran the wide out at a, on a comeback route, and they ran a tight end right behind him um, on a flag route. Very nice job. Safety was a little bit late coming over. 32-yard gain, or 33-yard gain for Otterbein, and now Hardwin's running for his life. Throws the comeback route, and it is caught on the far sideline, but the official, as you can see, Kevin, has got his hat off, so that means somebody stepped out of bounds and yep. then came back in. If he did, then that's not going to – oh, they're calling they're it a gonna catch. They're calling it a catch. I'll calling be darned. a catch. But typically on that, when you see a, an official take his hat off, that means somebody stepped out of bounds, and then he's not allowed to be the first one to touch the ball when it comes back in. Correct, right? correct. Unless he was knocked out of bounds. That could be. Maybe that's what the other official said. Let's say he was forced out and pushed out. Two great plays for Otterbahn right there. Though. Yeah, they needed him too, man. Hard one. Wants to throw, and a little comebacker again. The pass is caught. First down. On the far side, and that is going to be Armani Burton with the reception. So three straight quick passes. They're, they're doing a nice job. I mean, the passing. When he gets protection, they're doing a nice job in the passing game. They, they, he can throw the ball very well. And he's under pressure. He does get it away. And again, his tight end is his savior right there, Vincent Berardi, the freshman. Yeah, he showed a lot of poise right there, standing in there and taking that hit, delivering the ball. Now, I don't know if you notice the aroma that is in the press box right now. This is the best part about Marietta College football is at halftime, Smitty's Pizza oh, wow. brings food up here. So you are in for a treat, my friend. When I'm talking to Vanderwall, you can eat pizza oh, at halftime. Be, that'll be tremendous. Oh, man, that's good stuff. It smells really good right now. <laughs> that's why I'm here. They definitely need a score on this possession. Yeah. A.J. Cody in the backfield, and he's going to be thrown for a loss. They just have not had any success running the ball up front. You know, they, they, they've shown spurts where they can throw the ball and, and move the ball, but, you know, maybe they're just trying to run it to keep them honest. Well, but as a coach, I mean, I think you'll agree, when you get down this far, the passing routes are few and far between. There's, it's not like it's an open field. That's true. That, that helps the defense. And that's you know, why, you know what, the field. you know what, Kev, that's why I've never understood. You see it when you got, you guys go like they're going for two, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you see nine times out of ten they're going to pass the ball, and I'm thinking there's no room to, to run pass routes. Well, the only the only thing offensively you're looking at down there if you do throw the ball is a lot of times you're going to get a man-to-man -man look. So you're hoping maybe you can slide a little pick in there, a um, little misdirection, or catch, catch them sleeping. Um, the third penalty of the day on Jacob Neary, offensive lineman for Otterbein. That time he uh, he moved a little bit before the snap, so a legal procedure. It takes him third and eight. Yeah, that's not what you need when you're trying to get a get a score here. That changes your play calling on third down, definitely. Oh yeah, for sure. But it does open your secondary up a little bit if you want to throw the ball. That it does. Play action, Hardwin's in trouble, he calls his own number. Thought he was gonna break free right there, but a nice job by Chance Knight wrapping him up around the ankles. Yep. Pioneers went man to man with man free over top, so they had uh, good coverage. Now the question is, looks like they're gonna go for it. Yeah, fourth down. And that, that's probably a good decision, being down 22 nothing. They gotta, they gotta get some positive uh, Positives out of this drive. I like that quarterback draw right there, though. That was a little, that was some good positive yardage. Yeah, it was right at the right time when they went, you know, man to man. Their their backs are turned in the secondary. 
Sometimes you can score through there. My goodness, all the offensive skill players are in motion now for Otterbein, and they all get set. Five wide receivers. Hardman wants to throw. Has a man that's caught. Going to be first down. A.J. Cody inside the 10-yard line. Down to the eight. Nice little play there from uh, Otterbein. Yeah, that was a nice job. Nice design play, although we got a flag down. Holding. Oh. oh, my gosh. You just don't need that. That's a fourth penalty. Now, third holding call on him. They're shooting themselves in the foot a little bit here. They've got an opportunity to get themselves at least back in the game before half. Being down 22 nothing versus 22 to seven or eight is a little bit different. But now that changes drastically. Your just play calling fourth and 12. Tommy Zagorski for Otterbein has got to be just out of his mind at, and being upset at Neary because he's four penalties now on him and three of them have been very, very costly. You know, a lot of times though, that's, and they're going to call timeout. Um, a lot of times that's caused by the defensive front. The guy in front, the guy in front of him is probably uh, doing a really nice job. And uh, he's got to, he feels like he's got to get out of his stance to get a hold there. Coming up next week, Marietta goes on the road at Baldwin Wallace. And then on the seventh, they will be home here against John Carroll. 14th, they're at Wilmington. 21st, they're at home against Heidelberg. That will be homecoming. And then two weeks in a row on the road, the 28th and the 4th, Ohio Northern and Capital, respectively. And then they'll finish up the season with a big rivalry game on the 11th of November versus Muskingum. Otterbein has played three games at home. This is their first of three road games now. Of course, Marietta today, Capital next week, and Heidelberg on the 14th. Then the 21st, they are home against Baldwin Wallace, 28th, on the road at Mount Union. That's not gonna be fun. On the road on the fourth against Ohio Northern, and they finish out their season against uh, John Carroll. And of course, that's where uh, Zagorski was for a while at John Carroll. He went to, uh, he was the offensive coordinator at Akron, by the way, in Division I for, for a season. So he's had some good experience. He does. Fourth and 12 after the holding call. Hadwin. Hardwin wants to throw over the middle, has a man, and it is caught. There's a flag Light down at down. the one yard line. Not sure where that's going to be, but I was just getting ready to say. They're calling an incomplete oh, pass. Nope. But pass, pass interference, interference against Marietta. That's so good. that'll be an automatic first down. Automatic first. You know, Audubon's 11 for 19 on fourth down conversions this year. So the pass was incomplete. However, they are calling Marietta for a pass interference. So it will be first down for Otterbein. Let's get the call here from the official. Pass interference, defense, number 22, 15-yard penalty, and an automatic first down. Brady McManaway. I, really, I thought he caught that ball. I did, too. Well, now they're, they're, they're in a better position now. And they can still get a first down. Yeah, barely. First and 10 from the 11-and-a-half-yard uh, line. I wouldn't be surprised to see them go back to the tight end again. Well, he's been their offense so far in this first half, Kev. Man in motion is Aiden Snyder. And over the middle, and a nice job and a catch. I think they're going to call it a catch for Armani Burton at the one-yard line. Is that ball tipped? I don't think it was tipped. I don't know how in the world it got through there because the Pioneers' defense, it went right through their arms. They were right in the passing lane. I'll tell you what, say this, for, say what you want about Hardwin. He is not afraid to throw into coverage. No, he, and he's got a nice ball. I mean, he's got his little zip on it, and he, he makes pretty good decisions. So well, Audubon's better than their 0 3 record. Yeah. Deepest penetration for the Cardinals so far in this ball game, and they have it first and goal at the one. Hard one, hands to A.J. Cody, and Cody has stood up at the line of scrimmage. Marietta's Maybe having none of that. That's where they're just manned up. They got everybody in the box. They're going to make them yeah, throw it. You can't, you can't run up the middle against Marietta. You just can't. Your best bet is is uh, maybe a play action or something to the outside. If you're going to run it, you're going to have to run on the outside. It's 
Second and goal. They did lose a yard there, so it's from the two-yard line. Two tight ends, one in motion now. Bottom to top of your screen. And Hardwin wants to throw it to him, but he skips it in there. Yeah, he threw it just a little bit underneath of him. He was open. If he'd have got a little more air under it, that would have been, that would yep. have been a touchdown. And that was Berardi. I mean, that's the kid that's caught all those balls so far today. Seems like their go-to guy in the crucial situations. Got to stick in the end zone here if you're out of mind, man. You yeah, cannot, you're definitely four down territory here. You cannot get down this close and not come away with any points. They've got two downs to do it here. Third and goal from the two. AJ Cody now to the bottom of your screen. He'll line up as a wide receiver. Trips to the right, bunch formation on the right side of that line. Hardwin rolls to the right, throws across the middle, and a nice job. I believe that was OC Nurse got a hand on it. I'll tell you what, the Pioneers are lucky he didn't tuck it and run it because they were man to man and every one of those DBs had their backs turned and he chose to throw it. But if you'd see it on replay, you would see that he had a wide open lane to the end zone. Nurse did get a fingertip on it, otherwise that was a touchdown. So fourth and goal from the two. 4.22 to go in the first half. Marietta leads it 22 to nothing. Hardwin under pressure, just going to have to heave it, and it's Ooh. in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. Not a great decision on the pass, but the receiver actually almost made a great effort on the ball. And that's Aiden Snyder, and he's down in the back of the end zone. Yeah, he landed on his shoulder, it looked like. Defensively there, nice job by Brady McManaway. Yeah, they had good coverage, and they brought a lot of pressure right there, so he didn't have much time to, to digest what was going on. Thought it might have been a pick, but he threw it in the right spot. So Otterbein with their deepest penetration of the afternoon, and unfortunately for them, they come up empty-handed. That's got to be a, a, a killer motivationally there for them because they really needed to score there. And I and I agree with the call going on on fourth down. Yeah. I mean, you got to get a touchdown. If you can't get a touchdown from the two-yard line out there, you're in, it's not a good day. The one thing I don't see a lot of teams doing anymore, though, you know, even though everybody's in shotgun, when you get down to two in the one-yard line, shotgun, you're four or five yards deep. Yeah. You know, you go under center, and now you're only – two yards deep in a quarterback sneak. It's a lot, seems to me a lot easier than to, to go out of shotgun when you get down there. 4.15 to go in the first half. Coming up at halftime, we're going to talk with the head basketball coach of the men's basketball program here at Marietta College, my buddy John Vanderwall. He and his wife Tara up here in the booth, and uh, we're looking forward to talking to Coach V coming up here in just a few minutes to uh, get some insight on uh, Marietta's basketball program. I talked to Cole Vivian a second ago, who's the head coach of the women's team, and he said they start on Wednesday. So, I mean, here it is, not even October, and we're already talking basketball, and and uh, the way it is here at Marietta, it's it's nonstop. I mean, all the programs are so good here. The uh, Brian Brewer-led baseball program, and of course, Cole Vivian with uh, his women's basketball program, a great job last year for them. And Vanderwall, he just seems to reload every year and come back and always a factor in the OAC, multiple time champion of the Ohio Athletic Conference. Toughest division in Division Three basketball, in my opinion, is the Ohio Athletic Conference. So uh, looking forward to talking to John coming up here in just a few minutes. Second down for the Pioneers and Agnew trying to get it out of his own end zone. He'll fall ahead to the about the six yard line. Outside backer did a nice job right there, folding in and making the tackle from behind. Audubon needs a needs a stop right here. If they can get a stop on this third down, they got a shot to get in good field position and maybe get a score before half. Yeah. And maybe, I, I mean, I don't know, you're a coach, you tell me, do you bring pressure on the punter here if that's the I don't. I don't. I hold him up and I get a good return. Okay. Because you're going to get, the punter's going to be under pressure anyway and you don't want to get a 15-yard penalty on a, on a rough in the kicker call. Yeah. You're going to get the ball in good field position. But you got to get the stop on third. Third and six now for the Pioneers. Beerstra out of the shotgun. Connor wants to throw over the middle. He's got a man. That's on the far side, and that's going to be a first down. We got a flag. And a flag, I believe that's probably a helmet to helmet. Melchiori is the uh, recipient of the pass. 
Now nope. they're going to call pass interference, pass interference. against Marietta. Offensive. Pushed off. Killer. Pass interference. Offense. Number four. Half the distance to the goal. Third down. So an offensive pass interference against the Pioneers will take them back inside their five-yard line after what could have been a first down. Yeah, they they get ready to move the chains, um, but fortunately for Audubon, they've got another shot here to get them off the field and get good field position. 2.46 to go in the first half. Marietta leads it 22 to nothing. A couple of missed extra points, or it'd be 24. Third down and eight. It's hard to imagine, you know, <laughs> Missed a couple of extra points, did gossip, but he kicked a 40-yard field goal. Go figure. Pass in the flat is caught by First Dawson down. Snyder. First down, Marietta. And the Pioneers keep it going. Nice Snyder. nice route there by Dawson Snyder. Yeah, Audubon was playing a little bit of too soft in that coverage. Uh, gave him a little too much. They just ran a hook route there on the outside. He made a nice throw and catch. Moves the chains. Clock continues to roll. 2.21 to go in the first half. Kind of a broken play there, Kev. It looked like Deerstra. Yeah. Wanted to hand the ball off to Agnew, who was coming around on the jet sweep, but it didn't happen. Well, it looked like somebody had a little bit of miscommunication there. Thomas Cherry making the stop. And we'll see if the Pioneers are just going to try to run out the clock in the half or if they're going to actually throw the ball down the field and try to score. Second and nine. Audubon could still get the ball back with some time if they can get a stop. Got to get a stop, though. Fierstra. Little out route, and the pass is caught. I think that's Dre Baldwin on the far side. Pass completed to Dre Baldwin. Yep, yep. Down by Third and short. They're definitely not trying to run the clock out. He's called timeout. While I got a second, I want to, uh, don't know if he's listening or watching or not, but I want to say hi to my buddy, uh, Dr. Bill Rude. He uh, retired as the president here at Marietta uh, in the off season. I always enjoyed uh, spending some time with him on the air. Uh, just love Marietta College. and and did some great things while he was here, so he's enjoying his retirement. And, uh, the, uh, right now, the interim president, uh, serving through the uh, end of the 23-24 academic year, is Dr. Margaret Drugovich. Now, she is here in the booth. Uh, probably won't talk to her today, but she's here. Uh, so uh, taking over the reins from Dr. Bill Rude uh, in the off season. 129 to go in the first half out of the timeout from uh, Otterbein. This is a big down for Otterbein. Yeah. yeah, they need to stop here, uh, obviously, and then forcing Marietta to punt, and that give him just a little bit of time to try to move the football here. But first things first, Marietta has a chance to convert here, third and two. Bierstra, and there's gonna there's be- There's a, a flag. There's a pass interference or a hold. Carlos Alamo, the... Um, He's not happy about it either. Yeah. And that was a pretty good call. I mean, I, that's... Yeah, he was. He, he just, you know, it's a pretty easy call when the defensive back's not not even looking back for the ball. Right. So Carlos Alamo, the senior. That's hard. That's a hard thing to do as a DB is, is to, you know, man to man, because you don't ever know when the ball's coming, but... Easy to call from the official. Yeah, it was right in front of him, too, so you're not going to miss that. So first down, Marietta balls at the 30-yard line, and they uh, are in business keeping the drive alive here. And Andy Waddle saying something, or no, it wasn't Andy. It was, well, maybe it was Andy, saying something to the official pointing to the clock. Yeah, he's adding some time to the clock. Going yeah, back. no, it wasn't Andy. It was one of his uh, coaches. <coughs> Minute 25 back on the clock. And they're trying to squeeze every second they can. They want to try to get some more points on the board. Solos. 
Beerstra steps up in the pocket and oh. nearly intercepted in and out of the hands of Jay Melchiori. They uh, had an opportunity right there to get a pick and maybe a pick six if he had made that catch. In and out of the hands of Thomas Cherry, the sophomore linebacker. Don't think he was ready for it. Nope. He was in good position, just didn't expect it to hit him right there in the hands. Oh, no, some of them, some of them, they is really just like eating. Clock stopped with a buck 21 to go in the first half. Four wide receivers for Marietta, three at the top and one at the bottom. Beerstra wants to throw, has pressure, steps up, pass is caught, Dawson Snyder for about two yards, and that's it. He stays in bounds too, Kev. Yes, the clock's going to continue to run. The Pioneer offensive line is doing a nice job of protection. Well, they call timeout. Marietta took a timeout here. Yep. It's going to be third and let's call it eight. Again, the, coming up at halftime, not only will you get to eat Smitty's Pizza, I will get to talk to John Vanderwall coming up here in, uh, in just a few minutes. So uh, looking forward to that. Not sure he gets the better deal on that. <laughs> just save me a slice, will you? I drove an hour and a half for this today. We both did. Well, well you had a little bit longer drive, that's, maybe 15 minutes. That's right. Kevin coming down from uh, his home in Glendale, West Virginia today. And, as always, I make the drive from down around Hurricane, West Virginia, but loving, uh, loving Marietta College football. I want to thank Larry Heiser and Jeff Shally for having me back for another season. Also want to thank uh, Jim Wharton for taking over uh, the first couple of weeks when I was out of town, and uh, Mike Hayden as well. Jim will be back um, doing regular duties with me um, the next home game. just hoping right now that the clock will run out. Beerster under pressure and he gets away and will throw the ball. Looks like it is a catch. A catch. On the near sideline, that's Ryan Dawson. Moving the chains. The Dawson Snyder, <laughs> Ryan Dawson. Played for Bunkersburg South about 20 years ago. I don't know where that <laughs> came from. Got about a minute three left. Plenty of time. He did get out of bounds. He did. That was a great throw and a great catch. Nice little comeback out there from Snyder. Shotgun for Veerstra. Wants to throw. Looking left. Steps up. Tremendous and catch on the sideline. If he gives it to him, he gave it to him. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you one thing. You know, we talk about Agnew's running uh, ability. He just stepped up right there and did a tremendous job picking up a blitzing linebacker. And. Um, Tommy Zagorski on the far side vehemently disagreeing with the official that that was a catch. He thought he was out of bounds. At any rate, it's only a, like a yard gain, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. So Agnew's just as good a blocker as he is runner, it appears. Yep. Stocky dude. He is a fire hydrant. <laughs> I saw him on film and I was like, man, that dude is thick. Inside of a minute, 56 seconds to go in the first half. Beerstra in the shotgun, wants to throw, steps up, has a man down the right side. That is Dawson, and a nice job there. Good defense from Otterbein. That was great defense. He had double coverage there. I'm a little surprised. He, he, they got a flag. Maybe late, maybe roughing the passer. Well, Agnews. Either roughing the passer or holding. Well, I think it might be a hold because Agnew's having some words with the official. We'll see here. Holding yep. offense, number 72. Right. back so quite a bit. Corey Hart. Second a long way. 49 seconds to go. Now they're going to change their mind and say it was David Bush that did the hold and not Corey Hart. The Wasn't there a singer named Corey Hart? Was there a singer named Corey Hart? I believe so. Sunglasses at night. Thank you, Brian Guthrie, in the truck. Y'all can't my hear time. what I'm hearing in my ears, but I just got serenaded by my director. 
that was absolutely wonderful, by the way. Beautiful step up. The quarterback steps up the pocket, makes a nice throw right over the middle, drag route. John Serapitowski on the reception and Marietta continuing to move. Moving quick. Got 42 seconds to go. Little screen to Agnew on the right side and he'll get out of bounds down to the 34 yard line. It's a smart play by Agnew getting out of bounds, stopping the clock. Another first down. They're, doing, they're being very efficient in the last five to six plays. Yeah. Well, they want to put some points on the board here. It's obvious. They're getting, getting close to field goal range. I don't think they're there yet, but I, I'd say another five to seven yeah. yards. Yeah, I was thinking. Field well, goal range. We've already seen Gossett hit one from 40, and it probably could have went 50, like you yep. said earlier. Right now they're looking at about a 52, 53 yarder. Marietta with all three of their timeouts. Or actually, actually, I think they have two. And Beerstra just chucks it out of bounds. Zach Heimer applying the pressure to him. Nice job not taking the sack. Yeah. He kept moving around the pocket, and the offensive line did a nice job early on, and then they just, you know, you can only hold for so long. They're waving off intentional grounding as Beerstra was out of the pocket. I see that a lot on Sunday. You see too many, too many guys try to make something happen and don't throw it out of bounds and then take a loss. Yeah. It's a smart play by him. Beerster on the comeback route to Dawson Snyder. Snyder cuts up into the center of the field and he is gone. Dawson Snyder from 34 yards out. And Marietta puts another six on the board. Watch it again here, Coach. Yeah, it was a nice screen play. They set it up really well. Offensive line really uh, sold it, let them up, let them upfield, and then they came right behind him with the screen. Seth Wallace doing a nice job blocking downfield yep. for Snyder to give him that uh, lane inside. That's exactly what Otterbahn did not want yeah. and the Pioneers did want. Yeah, sure. Let's score some points here, boys. Gossett, and that one, but that one goes through. through. <laughs> so with 18 seconds left to go in the first half, Marietta leads it now 29 to nothing. Upcoming broadcasts coming up next weekend, high school football, George Washington versus Parkersburg High School. That will be in Parkersburg. And then October 7th, we'll be right back here as we take on John Carroll. You know, you talk about George Washington High School football, and we were talking off the air. With this transfer portal thing in the state of West Virginia, George Washington won their ball game 98 to seven last night. And that's just, that's, that's awful. a lot of points. It's just awful. A lot of points. It's just a lot of disparity uh, in high school football in West Virginia right now. Yeah, it's. Uh, and the size of the schools, there's two also disparity. You know, you go from anywhere from 1,800 to Playing teams that are in, this, in the same division, playing teams are, yeah. that are thousand. That's two. That's two graduating classes. That's uh, that's upcoming football. That'll be a good ball game, George Washington at PHS, and you can watch it right here on CAS 45 coming up this coming Friday. Little squib kick now, and Otterbein's just got to fall on it, and they'll do it at the uh, 31 yard line. No surprise there. They're trying to uh, eliminate the return get out of the half with a 29-point lead. You know, the question is, is Audubon going to come out and take a knee and, and end the half, or are they going to try to get something happening real quick with your 17 seconds to go? What you don't want to do if you're Audubon is give up a turnover real quick. It's the only a disadvantage if you try to, try to go down field here is if you do give up a turnover. Yeah. Hard one. Well, the Auburn will stop and go. Has a man, it's picked off, but it's out of bounds. Pass, Pass was intended for Armani Burton. Yeah, they definitely, definitely not gonna take a knee and, and get out of the half. They were trying to make something happen. Well, you know, listen. 
got to get the hats off that. You're zero and three on the year. I mean, what have you got to lose, right? That's true. That's true. Every every pot, every offensive play is is experience, mm -hmm. right? As um, as uh, Otterbein has a uh, has a man down. It's number uh, 87, Christian Padicky, the sophomore tight end, and he's holding his right hamstring. Yeah, I mean they're they're they're, they're fighting. You can you can tell that they're uh, you know. As a coach, when you're in this position, you don't, definitely don't want to play the scoreboard, but you uh, make good decisions and try to go in the half with some momentum or at least a little a little bit of positive to talk about. Well, so that's what I wanted to ask you now that we have a second. You've been a coach for a long, long time, and I'm sure you've been on this end of things. If you're Otterbein going in down, uh, you know, 29 to nothing, what do you tell your kids at halftime? And then what do you um, hope to gain in the second half? Well, I don't think you're out of it at this point, but you know, you're definitely got an uphill climb and I think you just gotta be positive and you gotta correct your mistakes and you gotta keep them fighting and, and keep them engaged in uh, you know, playing hard. You know, that's the biggest thing. You never want your team not to continue to play hard. I was gonna say mentally, that's that's the toughest part probably yeah. how to keep them in it mentally. You gotta focus on small things. Take each play at a time, possession at a time. A.J. Cody, the ball carrier across the 30, out to the 35-yard line, still on his feet, still driving. Nice job there by A.J. Cody, the ball carrier, close to the first down. He'll be about two yards short, and that'll be the last play of the first half. So our score after 30 minutes of football is Marietta 29 and Otterbein nothing. And coming up, we're going to talk to my buddy John Vanderwall. We'll talk to him in just a few minutes, and we'll find out how his golf game is. <laughs> he just said not very good. The dance team will be performing a hip-hop routine choreographed by alumna Rachel Burnham from Rockstar Wellness. Marietta College Dance Team. 
Welcome back to Don Drum Stadium on the campus of Marietta College. Our halftime score, Marietta leads it 29 to nothing and joined by my buddy John Vanderwall. And uh, John, welcome back. It seems like a tradition now for you and I. Every time we do a football game, I got to have you at least once. <laughs> it sure does. It feels like it was just yesterday. I was up here last year. It's, it's amazing how, uh, how fast time goes. So uh, talk about your off season. I mean, you've, uh, uh, you've had two practices under your belt, but I know you've been busy all summer long. Talk about it. Well, yeah, you know, summer's a, a blur for us. That whole month of June, we're running all of our camps and, and staying really busy with that. And then July hits, and you try to take a week or two vacation with the family, but also hit the road for some recruiting stuff. And then once August gets here, it's like, holy cow, we only got a couple of weeks before the guys get back. So uh, it goes by really fast, and here we are. It's hard to believe it's getting to close to the end of September and uh, getting closer and closer to basketball season. So that's, let's talk about it. I mean, that's the elephant in the room. Let's, let's talk about the 23-24 uh, the Pioneers. How are you looking? You've got some holes to fill, obviously, after uh, you lost some guys, but uh, you guys you just always seem to reload. It's, it's Well, yeah, I think last year was a little bit of a, a rebuild, a little bit of a reloading year for us. You know, we lost so many guys off that Final Four team. Uh, but we are very, very excited about this this winter. Um, you know, we only lost really one guy. Brennan Crawford graduated. Uh, he was he was a nice role player for us. Um, but we returned the majority of our roster. You know, I think over 90% of our scoring. And so this year, you know, we've got both of our assistant coaches were new last year. They're they're a lot more comfortable now. Uh, I actually just picked up another assistant coach that's going to help us tremendously. Um, and then all of our guys are back. And so. Last year, guys were trying to make the plays for the first time, and uh, you know, and the expectation here is, is, is pretty heavy and high. So, uh, but this year, I think I think we're going to return a lot of experience, and we got a chance to put together a really nice team. Talk about the OAC. It's all I've always said. It's the toughest conference in Division Three basketball, bar none. But uh, you know, it doesn't get any easier with the Ohio Athletic Conference. For sure, and, and definitely this year. Um, you know, I would tell people get out, get your season tickets, and get ready to watch some really good basketball this winter. Van Johnson's going to have some some great games played in it. Um, you know, John Carroll and, and Mount Union are as loaded as they've ever been. You know, Carroll's got the four Division One transfers, and Mount went to the Final Four last year. And both those teams have a, a lot of guys back. Um, we're playing most likely the number one preseason team in the country, Christopher Newport, uh, our second game of the season here. So our schedule's loaded. It's it's. Uh, we, we've bitten off a lot. Hopefully we can chew on it, but um, it should, should be a lot of fun. You've always had the the, uh, the mindset to, to, you know, to be the best, you have to play the best, right, and, yep. and stay sharp. And so, you know, when you talk about uh, those those teams that you play like that that make you better, how do you go into those ball games? Because, you know, it doesn't always come out on the winning end for you, but you probably learn a lot. Yeah, you just try to stay the course. You know, I mean, uh, we, we've talked to our guys oftentimes about those first few weeks of the season. Our, our season's not going to be made or broke. Uh, in those first couple weeks, we're going to learn a lot, lot from those games. Uh, but they're awfully important, especially when you're trying to make that NCAA tournament. You know, if you could beat a team like Christopher Newport or an Illinois Wesleyan or a Kelvin, who, you know, all three of those teams are going to be nationally ranked yep. and uh, they're on our preseason schedule. So they're going to be big games. But you, you know, if you if you don't come out on top, you just got to learn from them. You know, I mean, the year we went to the Final Four, we started off the season two and two. You know, and. Right. Uh, but then we didn't lose after that. So uh, we, we would take that again if that if that worked out that way. How uh, how was the off season as far as uh, hitting the recruiting trail? I know you, man, you are so busy in that off season, um, going around and seeing kids. How did it go for you? Good. We brought in a really nice class. We've got a good freshman group that we're excited about. We think there's some guys in there that can that can really help us. Although with returning as much as we did from last year's team, it'll be tough, challenging uh, for those guys to crack the lineup. We brought in a couple transfers as well. Uh, one of those is Diavion Price, who's, who came from Adrian College and led the NBAA in scoring last year. So we think he could he could definitely help help add to what we currently have. And uh, we feel good about our roster. We feel really good about it. Well, man, I wish you the best of luck this season. And uh, hopefully I get into the uh, Ban Johnson for some games this year. And this is Noah's last year, too. You're your yeah, manager. Yeah. That's kind of bittersweet, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, Noah went uh, Facebook Live this summer and uh, made a big announcement that this will be his last year uh, helping us out as a manager. And yeah. so 
we want his last dance to be to be one to remember. All right, man. Well, listen, best of luck this year. Thank Thanks. you so Thanks, much. Man. I love Appreciate you, brother. You. Yep. And uh, it's John Vanderwall, head coach of the Marietta men's basketball program. And don't forget, like he said, get your season tickets early. And as Terrell Owen says, get your popcorn ready because it's going to be a great basketball season here at Marietta as it always is. Our score at halftime, Marietta leads it 29 to nothing over Otterbein. Stay with us. We'll come back with the second half. Brian Noss and Kevin Copley coming up right after this. Stay with us. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Take your project from idea to execution. Large and small, simple to complex, top notch printing, custom signage, or a direct mail marketing campaign, the professionals at Sir Speedy are here to help. You'll always get the quality products, personalized service, and experience you've come to expect. So bring us your challenges and we'll work with you to solve them. We're your local resource for creative solutions. Beautiful, inventive, smart, everything you need. At Sir Speedy, we do it all. Have you heard what happened to those with curious minds? They packed up, broke free of conventions. These prospectors of knowledge are blazing a new trail, joining the long line of those who sought adventure and prepared for anything. This is the time. This is the place. Bring forth a pioneer. It's football season, and CAS Cable has a deal for new customers that's a real touchdown. Right now, new customers can buy one month of internet service from CAS Cable and get a second month free. Rush to our website for details today. Tackle high prices with internet service from CAS Cable. What was that? Too many football references? Healthy relationships, it's how we think about primary care at Camden Clark. When you choose one of our providers, you're starting a relationship with access to award-winning specialty care, diagnostics, and MyWVU chart. Our state-of-the-art user-friendly electronic medical records that's at your fingertips. Caring for you for over 125 years, we're the only local community health care providers backed by the power of WVU medicine. Healthy relationships start here. Carl's Pawn Shop is the first in the area to have the newest technology for evaluating precious metals. Yes, we're forging ahead of the pond industry with state-of-the-art equipment which measures actual content in precious metals. When looking at jewelry or coins, we can tell you exactly what metals are in the items and its worth. Carl's has been a trusted source for buying and selling items and making loans for over 25 years. Stop in and see us at 3410 Emerson Avenue or 515 Division Street in Parkersburg. Carl's Pawn Shop. The Corner Cafe in downtown Parkersburg, next to Matheny Motors, has you covered for every meal of the day. Open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., seven days a week. You can enjoy our full menu whenever you want. Burger for breakfast, omelet for dinner. You can have it at the Corner Cafe. Enjoy our dinner specials like meatloaf, baked steak, and open-face roast beef sandwiches. Top off your meal with homemade desserts, including our wide selection of pies. We hope to see you soon at the Corner Cafe, 3rd and Ann Streets in downtown Parkersburg, next to Matheny Motors. You don't have to go back to the dealer or travel hours to get professional maintenance and repair for your foreign auto. Cornerstone Auto Service is fully equipped with dealer level equipment and the expertise to provide you with the same quality repairs you receive from the dealer at a fraction of the cost. From expert diagnostics to routine maintenance, Cornerstone provides honest answers and quality service. Professional, reliable, affordable. That's the team at Cornerstone Auto Service, Camden Avenue, Parkersburg. All our dogs agree, Crazy Bone Pet Spa is the place to be. Our boarding is leading the pack with clean, spacious suites and plenty of fun and playtime to go around. Doggy daycare is a blast, too. All day fun with their friends is just what they need. Plus, they get to enjoy Crazy Bone's indoor play zone and turf outdoor play area, which means fun in the sun and no muddy paws if it's a rainy day. Don't forget to spoil them with treats, toys, and bling in our fully stocked lobby or maybe a day of beauty in our award-winning grooming salon. Crazy Bone Pet Spa, the fun place for your pet. Thank you, CAS Cable, for supporting Williamstown Cross Country. I'm Rick Derubis from the Adelphia Summer Concert Series, and I want to thank CAS Cable for being our partner. Thank you, CAS Cable, for the continued support of the PHS Big Red Marching Band.
Let Sir Speedy take your project from idea to execution. Large and small, simple to complex, top-notch printing, custom signage, or a direct mail marketing campaign, the professionals at Sir Speedy are here to help. You'll always get the quality products, personalized service, and experience you've come to expect. So bring us your challenges and we'll work with you to solve them. We're your local resource for creative solutions. Beautiful, inventive, smart, everything you need. At Sir Speedy, we do it all. At Cox Family Pharmacy, we've built our reputation by taking exceptional care of our patients. Our team takes the time to get to know you and your family so you can get the health and service that you deserve. Thank you for making us your pharmacy for over 17 years. Cox Family Pharmacy, we're trusted. Tired of long wait lines or no one answering the phone at chain pharmacies? At Cox Family Pharmacy, a real person answers the phone and we do our best to make sure you and your family are well taken care of. Choose Cox Family Pharmacy, we're trusted. Halloween season is almost here, so creep on in to Crown Decor and Gifts for a frightfully and ghastly array of Halloween decor and gifts. Our dreadful assortment of decor ranges from vintage inspired to whimsical, and it's the perfect fit for your spectacular decorating plans. Don't forget to drag yourself to the Crown Confectionery for a buffet of ghoulish sweets and treats and dreadful edibles. Creep on in to Crown Decor and Gifts and see why we love Halloween. And welcome back to your spectacular happy place. Hello, I'm Dr. Jason Hughes. I'm the director at the Wood County Technical Center and the Caperton Center for Applied Technology. I just want to say thank you to CAS Cable for being a wonderful partner in education with us. I'm Sharon Kesselring with American Red Cross. Thanks CAS Cable for supporting us. Paulo's Pizzeria, located at 1403 Grand Central Avenue in Vienna, welcomes you to try their all-you-can-eat buffet. Join us Monday through Friday, 11 to 2, as well as Sundays, 11 to 2 and 5 to 8. Enjoy our salad bar, pizza, pasta, subs, cheesy bread, calzones, pepperoni rolls, and desserts. We are proud to be a local, family-owned business and look forward to serving your family at DePaulo's. These sweet unicorns are all about the symbol of beauty and magic. Let Mark Armstrong's Gores show why we were voted the number one jewelry store in the Mid-Ohio Valley. Whether you're looking for that special diamond or any other unique piece of jewelry, show your loved one the best is yet to come with a memory that will last a lifetime. If other area jewelers have trusted me for over 45 years, shouldn't you? Honest Fred's Flooring is your one-stop premier flooring destination. Whether residential or commercial, you can count on us for first-rate customer service and a vast selection of flooring options. You're invited to sit down with our flooring experts to discuss your project, and our warehouse is full of flooring ready for installation. Plus, take advantage of 0% financing. Schedule your free estimate today at honestfreds.com or give us a call. The flooring you want, the service you need, and the value you deserve. Honest Fred's Flooring, Parkersburg, Marietta, and Spencer. I started in the mattress business in 1976. I was 24 years old. I spent 30 years running large manufacturing plants building all types of mattresses. Remember waterbeds? There are many ways to design mattresses. 
and they all have their pros and cons. What you need to know is how those pros and cons fit with your individual needs. Every person has their own age, weight, and medical history to consider. If it doesn't say Max, you're not the right mattress store. Thank you, CAS Cable, for supporting PHS Wrestling. Thank you to CAS Cable for your amazing support of the Marietta Riverfront Roar 2023. Without your support, we wouldn't have been able to do it. Thank you, CAS Cable, for your continued support of the Williamstown Basketball Club. Jeremiah's Coffee House, now at 165 Front Street in downtown Marietta, is more than just the best coffee in town. We have a full menu of locally sourced homemade soups, sandwiches, and salads. Plus, all of our items are gluten-free or have gluten-free options, including our delicious desserts. Stop by the new location and spend some time outside on the patio. And, of course, we have the highest quality coffee around. Stop by and see us today or check us out online at jeremiahscoffeehouse.com. Welcome back to Don Drum Stadium on the campus of Marietta College. Our halftime score, Marietta 29 and Otter by nothing. Kevin Copley along with me. Uh, Kevin, some uh, interesting stats from the first half. Take it away. Yes, sir. Uh, Marietta's got 14 first downs to Audubon six. And uh, Marietta has 123 rushing yards, 161 passing yards for a total of 407 yards in the first half. And Audubon has 117 total yards. So. A little bit of a disparity there um, offensively. Uh, time of possession is very similar. 16 minutes and 48 seconds for Marietta. 13 minutes and 12 seconds for Otterbein. So that's not too far off. Um, third down conversions, Marietta has been very successful, five of eight. And Marietta scored three out of three times in the red zone where Otterbein had one chance there in the second half, in the second quarter, to punch it in and just couldn't get it done. Bryce Agnew is the uh, lead, leading rusher for Marietta. He has 87 yards on 15 carries. And uh, Connor Bierstra also has 33 yards on four carries. And for Otterbein, A.J. Cody uh, has 10 yards, um, or excuse me, yeah, yeah, 10 yards, but net seven. Uh, but overall, they have a negative yards rushing coming into the second half. Yeah, Ajay Cody, a, uh, a good runner, but uh, Marietta's been all over him this afternoon, so he'll have to uh, try to get uh, back on track here in the second half. So Marietta won the toss at the beginning of the ball game, so they deferred. So Otterbein is going to kick off here in the second half to the Pioneers. Hayden Brook is the uh, sophomore kicker. That could be a big swing to scoring right before half and then getting the ball back right yep. here at halftime. No onside here. They're going to go for it. And it rolls past Vonte Hodges into the end zone. So Marietta starts first and 10 from their 25. That's always the Bill Belichick motto is to get that score right before half and then get the ball back and score again. That 14-point swing without them touching the ball. He's had a little bit of success over the years. Just a tad bit. Although... I've been a great fan of the and been in the AFC with Pittsburgh, but yeah, you know since uh, since TB12 has left, um, they it's have, been a little different. It has been different, but they do play the Jets this weekend, and I think the Patriots have beaten the Jets since 1948. So it's it's been a long <laughs> yeah. been a long time since. Uh, of course, Since the Jets have had a few bad things happen to them this, and, this season. Yeah, Agnew right up the middle. That's first down, Marietta, on the first play of the second half. Not the way Otterburn really wanted to start Bryce it defensively. Agnew carries. He was tracked down by Tayon Howard. Hopefully, the coach uh, for Otterburn, he you know, had, a, had a good pregame talk or post or, uh, halftime down talk with him about Bonnie. staying in the game, taking it possession by possession, because you're not going to get back in it with one big play. Yeah, they got to go chunks for sure. Two wide receivers to the bottom of your screen, one tight end for Marietta and Agnew in the pistol formation. Now they'll send Witzberger in motion and they give it to Bryce Agnew. Across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Yeah, did a nice job at Key, uh, <clears throat> the Cardinals did a nice job keying their uh, 
Justin Bartlett the men at the front. Stop after uh, a both of them slanted three. right to the ball and made a nice play up front. Second and seven. Still got three yards, but. Yep. <clears throat> Second and seven for Marietta. Front line for Marietta has done a really nice job this game of blocking up front and making holes for Agnew and protecting the quarterback. Well, they, you know, as we talked about, they do have some size across the front, and they have experience as well. Andy Waddle talked about that in the pregame, is that their uh, offensive line has some experience. And Dawson Snyder off the right side and still on his feet down to the 35-yard line. Nice gain, about 20 yards at, thereabouts. Tackle was made by Rachel Had a big hole. I think you could have driven a truck through that hole. But into did a nice job once he got the open field, too, of cutting, cutting the to the outside and avoiding the safety. They marked him out at the 36-yard line. It'll be first and 10, Marietta. Man in motion is Dante Dacio. Agnew, right side. He just continues to keep, keep his momentum going forward. He's getting two and three and four yards a chunk every time he runs the ball. That's why he's an All-American. Second and seven. Auburn does not need them to score right here. They, they need to get a stop if they have any chance of staying in this ball game. Pistol formation. Bierstra, Agnew in the backfield, and they give it to Agnew. He's up the middle. Agnew in the 15, 10, 5, into the end zone, touchdown. Marietta Agnew from 33 yards out. Tremendous run. He hit that hole, and he was gone. He's got good speed. For as big a guy as he is, he's got very good foot speed. His little legs just go, go, go. Watch it again here on the Matthew replay, Johnson. Coach. Or no, a matter of fact, we just had it there and saw it. Appreciate that. It's uh, extra point time now for Gossett. He's missed a couple today. Let's see if we can get this one up and through. And he does. So with 12-10 to go in the third, Marietta jumps out to a 36 to nothing lead. Stay with us. You're watching Marietta College Football presented by Sir Speedy Printing in Parkersburg on CAS 45. I was out doing this one day, and this happened. Not cool. So I went to Murray's, talked to Dennis. He rocks, like he literally rocks. They got me fixed up super fast, hassle-free. It was awesome. That's why I keep going back. When glass breaks, call Murray's. Murray's will replace damaged insulated residential glass and a 10-year guarantee on seals from the manufacturer. Replacement units are made right here in the USA. Murray's, your trusted source for replacement glass for 75 years. Welcome back to Don Drum Stadium on the campus of Marietta College. Our score, Marietta 36 and Otterbein nothing after a 33-yard run from Bryce Agnew. The yeah, Otterbein did not need to Cody. go down 14 more points before, the, uh, before they touched the ball. Uh, that was a Bryce Agnew 33-yard run, Matthew Gossett kick. They had five plays for 75 yards. It took two minutes and 50 seconds off the clock. It makes it 36 to nothing. Derek Klein has it teed up at the 35-yard line, and the left-footed kicker boots it away. Little pooch kick. Ajay Cody takes it at the 20-yard line, and he has a nice return of about 17 yards out to the 37-yard line. Ajay Cody. Cody on the return. My math was a little off in the first time. I said over 400 yards. You have 359 yards currently. I can't trust you educators. I know. And I, think know? I, I, didn't, I, mean, I didn't take my shoes off at the count. <laughs> I think I added two numbers together. I shouldn't have added From together. I thought that was an awful lot of yards. It did sound like a lot, but I trusted you like still, an idiot. Still 359, still a lot of yards. <laughs> So Otterbein, first and 10 from their 37. Good field position to start. 
their first drive in the second half. Ajay Cody, the ball carrier, following his blocker along the right side and turns it upfield, has some good yards, close to a first down. Nice job there by Cody following uh, Alex Pataki right around the right side. I think that was their best run play of the day right there. A little power off tackle. Did a nice job. Got to the outside. Just short of the first down. Yep, got nine on in the uh, on the run around the right side. Second and one. Hardwin wants to throw. He does over the middle. Nice catch. And Hardwin, again, not afraid to throw that football into traffic. Armani Burton, the recipient right there of the uh, slant. Yeah, they're going to hurry up. He is definitely not afraid to throw it in there. Hardwin across the middle and it's the official. Yeah. In and out of the hands of Ajay Cody. You know, trying to going fast. Trying to get something momentum going. Second and ten. I've been impressed with the way he throws the ball. He, th he throws a nice ball. Yeah. They just can't seem to get enough good plays together to, to finish it's hard, the drive. It's been, it's been hard stringing them, stringing them together. Yeah. You're right. And it's oh picked off. Rumbling, <laughs> bumbling, stumbling. He's good. Man, well, I'll tell you what. 99. Isaiah McCartney was just the man in the middle right there. That was a lot of beef running down the field with that interception. And a big flag on the play back here at the 44-yard line. Let's see. They're going to – Hardwin says it's against – Marietta, but let's wait and see. Uh, it has to be after the interception, though, I would think. Yep. Still Marietta ball. I think they had it on the return, blocking the back on the return. Okay. What a, what a play for that young man. Big Isaiah McCartney. He was a motor. Not, I don't know that he'd have made it to the end zone anyway, even if okay. they didn't get tackled. 6'2", 295 from right up the river in Steubenville, Ohio. He's a junior. Remind me of Greg Lloyd a few years back. <laughs> Number 95, Pittsburgh Steelers. Here's a look at the big man. Where's the oxygen? First down, Pioneers. All that running for nothing because of the penalty. Beerstra with a new backfield now in the backfield for Marietta. Vontae Hodges, the ball carrier. He'll get Vontae to the 49-yard line, just shy of midfield. Second down, Pioneers. He was hit by Bryce Walker. Getting some other guys involved, getting some, getting some touches, giving Agnew a break. Three -yard pick Plus, up. you know, if you get a 36 nothing lead, you don't want to get your best running back, All-American running back hurt. Nope. So I'd be surprised if you see him very much more today. Uh, he'll probably pay, play, but it'll be sparingly, like you say. There's a broken play there as Veerster tried to hand the ball off to Hodges, and Hodges wasn't having it. Veerster did a nice job Connor just getting Veerster positive yards on that play. Yep. Justin Running back, I don't think, was expecting the, the handoff. And that's, you know, that's the trouble you run into when you when you start playing uh, two and three uh, deep players is, um, you know, the communication's not always there because they're not always going to get the reps in, in during the practice week, right? Right. They, yeah, they're... <clears throat> they're getting, they're getting. A lot of times they're getting uh, scout team reps rather than uh, first team reps. With yeah, we got a flag on the play. Looks like maybe a hold. Go bring it back. Yeah, the officials pointing to Marietta. But on the other hand of that too, you get a young guy, you get in there and uh, get an opportunity. You got to take advantage of it. You can't blow an assignment. Seth Wallace guilty of the hold. For Marietta, so that'll march him back 10. Second 20 ish, no, 15, 17. I'm not counting on you to do any <laughs> math, no math at this point. No, oh, that's you hurtful. Have totally disappointed me in your math. That's goals. hurtful. I teach engineering. <laughs> Beerstra. Oh my god. Back goodness. shoulder what fade. Catch. What a great catch by Jay. Offensive pass interference. And they're going to call it against. Melchiori, yep. ding dong. Just enough of a little push off just to get some separation. I, 
that was a that was a tough call, but you know I think he did put his hands on him a little bit. I think Cardinal defender corner the uh, left corner there sold it too. Yeah. That just marches him back even farther. I'm not even going to add all that up. <laughs> second, let, how about second a mile? I'm letting you off the hook, Copley. I'm I'm you know you can relax now as far as your uh, addition subtraction skills. <laughs> Down and 32. 32, there you go. <laughs> we'll let him do the You had help there. That doesn't count. Let's just say a second and a bunch. You got a timeout. Yeah. They want to talk it over, see what play they can draw up or pull out of the playbook for a second and 32. I would say you get some, just get a couple of chunk plays and now it's not out of the question they might find some way to to get a first down because they've had some big plays today. Right. But uh, again, coaching wise, I think you're looking at let's just get in a good position to punt the ball. Don't get greedy and throw a pick or anything like that. Marietta, after today, will uh, go on the road. As you can see there, they're going to uh, Baldwin-Wallace next week and then back home against John Carroll, then uh, back out on the road against Wilmington. Heidelberg is home for homecoming. A couple of away games, Ohio Northern and Capital on the 28th and 4th of November, respectively, and then uh, Muskingum closes out the year here at Don Drum on November the 11th. Brian Austin, Kevin Copley with you here on uh, CAS 45, our coverage of Marietta College Pioneer Football. Glad to have you with us here on this beautiful Saturday afternoon in Marietta, Ohio, along the banks of the Ohio River. Looks like Audubon might be bringing some pressure here. Hodges with the handoff. and Great job of pursuit down the line. Yeah. And a flag, and another flag. One long. Oh, that's this not, is on uh, the Marietta sideline. Yeah, a little pushing. Play. And that was right. Andy oh, Waddle was two. right in the middle of that too. So. Yeah, he's not happy of whatever transpired there. It's always a little touchy when you get a opposing player on the sideline of the home team. And the official was saying something to one of the kids on the Marietta sideline that is not in uniform. He has a jersey on, and I think he just threw him off the sideline. He did. He's leaving. Yes, sir. Doing the run of shame down the track. Yeah, I just think they just threw him out of the out of the ball game. And you don't know too what sometimes you don't you see what you see, but you don't know what's said. Right. Um, you know, it's hard to read lips under those helmets. So the officials are sorting this out. There has been one of the Marietta players on the sideline has been ejected. Was he ejected or the coach sent him out? No, the official pointed, official pointed right at him and told him to get out. Well, there you go. So I said something or done something that was uh, not appropriate. I didn't see what happened. I just saw the scrum. Well, and there's here's here's the call. Did they call on the number that they ejected? Well, I'm confused. Hey, Dad. That might be the first time I've ever seen a player get a penalty with not being in uniform. Well, and they said that they've ejected an Otterbein player, but yet they ran one of the Marietta kids off the uh, off the sideline. 
They called an unsportsmanlike personal foul against number 13. Now, and I'm not going to speculate here because there's two 13s on our, on our team, so I don't know if it was Thurman or Nelson that uh, got ran off. But the other 13's there. Yeah, I'm not sure. It was, whatever it was was not a good situation. But the, I will say the officials stepped in and took control and so did the coaching staff. Yeah. That could have been ugly. But they, they nipped it. So a correction on the ejection. It was not an Otterbein player. It was Marietta number 13. Now, if it was Tuck Nelson or Eric Thurman, I can't tell you. Maybe I can find out up here in the press box, but. Brings up fourth down. Um, Got a fourth down now. Marietta's going to punt. So Otterbein, you know, get, get, getting them off the field with 8.38 to go in the third. Okay, so it was just confirmed that it was Tuck Nelson for Marietta that did get ejected. So he did something he shouldn't have done on the sideline there. Otterbein catches a break here. They get uh, the Marietta punter shanks one out of bounds. Out of bounds Probably only Marietta picked up about 20 yards yard on that punt. So they're going to start their own, they're going to start their drive inside of Marietta territory on the 42. 47, excuse me. Are you, are you referencing my golf game there when you said shank? Shank, well, you know, if the shank fits. I haven't played golf with you yet. I don't know. Listen, I, have, I haven't gotten to play near as much this year as I wanted to. It was just. Come on, play at Ogilvy. Oh, gosh. I love to hate that course. I really do. I've played that course several times up there. Last time I played was. Uh, the Palmer course up there, the one that they just built a few years ago before he passed away. Another tremendous run. They, they've strung together a few nice runs here in the third quarter. A.J. Cody, the ball carrier, first down yardage for Otterbein. I'm not sure if Mary has, 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 has put any subs in on defense or not. Oh, that was a well-thrown ball yeah, just Ar out of the fingertips. Armani Burton, the, uh, the intended receiver, Good defense as well. They had a, they had a corner underneath Tanner and a Bills, safety over top. So that was a well-thrown ball. I mean, that was just all around nice play on both sides. Tanner Bills on the defensive uh, coverage there for Marietta. It brings up second and 10 for the Pioneers. Second they really, for the, uh, Cardinals. They really need to punch this in, get some momentum going, give them some build on, some positive. Tight end is Berardi in motion, and they give it to A.J. Cody, left side. He has nowhere to that go, and he is anywhere. swarmed over. Great job by the Jay Pioneer Cody. defense. Chance that Knight led the way. Yeah, Chance they did a nice job scraping down the linebackers, a nice job scraping down and the line, and just gang tackled. Down. This has been Audubon's nemesis a little bit here this game. They, 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 the times they've gotten the red zone, they just have not been able to capitalize. They've Get a few lost yardage plays and shoot themselves in the foot. Third and 15 now after the loss. Ajay Cody motions back into the backfield now and he'll be the sidecar to Hardwin. Hardwin lets it fly. Great catch if it stands. No signal from the official. And yeah, they're going to say he caught it. Calling it a catch at the 27 yard line, but he's gonna be way short Passes of the first down, but a little more manageable. A little shaken up too. Yeah. Gets up. That's a tremendous job getting, he's keeping his feet down. Yep, Armani Burton on the uh, out route there on the sideline. He's had a nice game. Ball is he did stay in bounds, so the clock continues to run now. It's 6.51 to go down. in the third. Cardinals. How big is he? He's a big receiver. Burton, you mean? Yes. I'll find out. Another flag. Did they call timeout when the clock the expired, I think. The flag. Picked it up. So Burton is 6'3", 200 pounds. He's a senior. He looks bigger than that. I thought he was a little bit bigger than that. He, he, he does, he's, he's thick for a wide receiver. 
I guess 63200 is not, not small. No, it's not small. I want to thank our friends at the uh, Boathouse Barbecue in Marietta. They fed our crew today. And so we appreciate those folks. Always uh, take care of the uh, CAS 45 staff very well with uh, some great food pregame. Also want to thank our uh, sponsor is Sir Speedy Quinning in Parkersburg. They've been with uh, Marietta College and CAS for a long, long time. And so we want to thank uh, them for, uh, for uh, stepping up and being our sponsor. Head coach Tommy Sigorski out at uh, close to midfield there, and he was having a discussion with the officials. I'm not sure what that was all about, but he was giving them an earful. It's fourth and manageable here. Yeah, fourth and eight. Hard one, wants to throw and overshoots his intended receiver, Owen Beebe, and he had him. He had about a step on his uh, on the coverage. He did, but it was tight coverage, though. I mean, it, it was there was a guy behind him. Well, he's been throwing tight coverage That's all day. True. That's you know, true. he's been successful uh, as we've seen. Yeah, he, I mean, he's, he's shown to make that throw today. So Marietta will take over on their own 27-yard line. They lead it 36 to nothing. Beerstra still in at quarterback. Zion Jackson Wilborn now in the backfield. Agnew getting a uh, well deserved rest. Beerstra wants to throw, looking for Wilburn out of Beautiful the backfield. Ball. What a great back shoulder catch by number nine, Zion Jackson Wilburn, the sophomore. It was a great catch, but I want to tell you what, that ball was on the money. Great back shoulder right there. Oh, it was great. He never saw the ball. And have the ability to come out of the backfield and catch the ball like that, it's, it's a good asset. Yep. Just adds another dimension to your offense that, that uh, gives the defense fits. Beerstra. Looking over the middle, he's gonna throw a pick. And a great job there by Tayon Howard. He stepped right in front of that. Let's watch it again here, Coach. Yeah, he he actually, the safety did a nice job because that was not the play, not the throw he wanted to make. He wanted to make the throw on the post on the other side and then had to come back to his second look and second read and it wasn't open and uh, the Cardinals made a nice, nice play there, getting a pick. So first turnover of the game for Marietta. Kills a drive, and Otterbein with good field position at their own 45 to start this drive with 5.56 to go in the third. Brian Nost and Kevin Copley on CAS 45 and our coverage of Marietta College Football. Running right into your living room there is number seven, Jordan Boast Floyd, the running back. Floyd, Definitely carries. found more success running the ball uh, in the last few drives Hawkins. than they did early on. I'm not sure if they've cleaned up some stuff up front or if uh, they've just given them more confidence. Hardwin, out route, and Boyd right there again on the catch. Little chunks, Jordan maybe a gain of two right there, and that's it. They need to move the chains here. Get in position to score some points. You know, it's, the scores get to the point where it's going to be tough to come back, but they want to have some positive things that they'll be able to build off of for next week. Yeah. Five minutes to go in the third on a running clock. Floyd now in the backfield in shotgun formation, along with Hardwin. Hardwin rolls to the right, has time, has a man, first down. Nice job there by Armani Burton, Kev, getting in the open in the flat. Yeah, Burton's done a nice job today. He's been kind of their go-to guy when they needed needed some needed a play. Him the tight end as well, 84. Quarterback did a really good job of uh, First and 10, Otterbein at the 37. 
Hardman wants to throw again and in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Vincent Berardi. And Berardi's been his favorite target today, Coach. Yes, sir. <coughs> He's been consistent and, you know, they've been going to him quite a bit. That was just a little bit high off his fingertips. I think if he'd have got it down there, that would have been a nice little four or five yard gain. Clock stopped on the incomplete pass, 4.23 to go here in the third. There it is bringing pressure. Hardwin saw it and got rid of it. Nice job, and uh, Ajay Cody on the reception. Flag down, on the play. Threw down the check Cody. down there <coughs> when they saw the, the blitz the coming. Executed that well, but maybe it looked really good because they held. Well, Armani Burton, your uh, your favorite receiver there, number eight, guilty of the hold. <laughs> at least it wasn't 73, Neary, who's had a terrible first half. Four penalties on him, three of them were holding penalties. Yeah, as an offensive lineman, you know, getting back to that, you never want to hear your name called over the intercom or by the official. Otterbein in that first half penalized six times for 55 yards. Second down Marietta in the first 16. half, four penalties for 43 yards. Ajay Cody in motion now to the bottom of your screen. Quick out, pass is caught. Yeah, Zane Dunning. Marietta had a little cover two look there, so they just took what they gave him, threw underneath. The corner had to come up and just make a, make a play on the sideline, but still third and 12. Marion is just bending but not breaking. Yeah. Third down and about 12 for Otterbein. Hardwin all alone in the backfield. Two step drop, slant route, pass is caught. Going to be short of the first down with the catch is Zane Dunning. That's close. Oh, they're going to give it to him. Wow. Uh, they gave him that's a good spot. Wow. Good spot for Otterbein. How you like them apples? I'll tell you what, he throws that slant ball as well as I've seen. Yeah. At this level. What any level? He, he throws that well. Ajay Cody loses his helmet. Handoff goes to Ajay Cody. Number four. You have to come off. You got to come out for a play. That's right. They'll bring number seven, Jordan Boast Floyd, back in. Second and ten. Don't look now, but Marshall beat Virginia Tech. Wow. In Huntington, West Virginia today. Wow. Tech is struggling this year. Yeah, Virginia Tech goes to one and three, and Marshall, I believe, is uh, four and zero oh now. As they say, there might be a job opening in Blacksburg. <laughs> You do live in Virginia, so you, you should yeah. have the inside track there, right? Oh, yeah. I've, we got a lot of Hokie fans. My Our daughter went to Virginia Tech, uh, graduated a couple of years ago, so we've been down there quite a bit. Beautiful campus, though. they got a beautiful campus down there. Great school. One of the best entrances for a college football team I've ever been a part of or Enter ever seen. Enter the Sandman. Enter the Sandman. Shakes the stadium. Second and 15. Hardwin steps up. He's in trouble. He's going to go down at the 35 yard line. He'll lose maybe three on the play. I'll give that to the defense. That's a coverage sack right there, the defensive secondary. Yeah. Um, there was nowhere to go with the ball. And Isaiah McCartney on the stop for the Pioneers and brings and up a third and 18 Nation after the three yard is. loss. See, I have to give my hat off to Mario's defense. Every time the Otterbein's been inside their territory, they have been a little bit, but have not broken and just have not given up any points. Man in motion is Berardi. Hard one, wants to throw and he's gonna go for all he's, all he's worked down the left side, passes intended for Armani Burton. He had a hand on it, couldn't hit bring him, it in. Hit him right in the face mask, I believe. Yeah. 
But that's a, that's a difficult, I mean, he's, he's jumping back, trying to catch that pass. It was, wasn't defended bad, bad uh, poorly. It was just, um, that's a tough, tough catch. Yeah. And it is fourth down. Another situation, they've been, they've been in quite a bit. Fourth down and long. Fourth and 18. Time to back your defense. Hard one under pressure, and he's going to throw a duck, and it's going to be picked off. Picked off. He threw. He <coughs> they were running a wheel route with the tight end, and just underthrew it. And uh, Marietta defense was right there to take that gift and get out of bounds. So Marietta, I think that's what the second turnover today for uh, Otterbein, because they had a fumble earlier that we got, and then. Uh, Check. I believe that's the second turnover. Hit a fumble in the first half. At their own 19-yard line, first down, Pioneers. Yeah, I think that's right. I think you're right. That's the second one. That one fumble was an interception. No, two, that's three because they had the, uh, the defensive tackle. Oh, okay. Had the interception. All right. So two picks and one fumble. Handoff over the left side. Zion Jackson Wilburn for the Pioneers. What year is he? He runs hard. Well, Wilburn's only a sophomore. So he's going to be the heir apparent, looks like. Yeah. He's, he's not going to miss a beat, I don't think, because he, he runs hard, too. Put his shoulder down and just kept on trucking. From around the Ohio Athletic Conference today in the fourth quarter, John Carroll leading Heidelberg 34-7. Third and short, he picks up about two there. Jackson Wilborn carries. Audubon linebacker came up. Walker tripped got his up. legs. But he fell forward, his momentum was going forward. It's gonna be the end of the, end of the quarter, we believe. Yeah, I think that'll be the last play. So as we head to the uh, fourth quarter, Marietta in total command of this one, 36 to nothing over Otterbein. We'll come back and call the final quarter for you right after this on CAS 45. It's game time, and One Community Federal Credit Union is here to help you tackle your financial goals. With our convenient and secure electronic banking and mobile services, we're taking our customer service experience to the next level. Plus, our CD rates are some of the best around, so you get more bang for your buck. When you need a loan, One Community can get you a great rate and a fast decision made locally. It all adds up to us being the Mid-Ohio Valley's winning team. One Community Federal Credit Union, online at onecommunityfcu.org. I sincerely hope you never need my services because my firm represents people that have been seriously hurt in automobile accidents. I'm Jim Staley, and I've seen the devastating effects that those accidents can have, not only on those who are injured, but also on those who are at fault. Don't drive distracted. Put down the phone. It can wait until you get where you're going. Staley Law and Mediation, advocating for victims of serious personal injury. My good buddy Jim Staley right there, Staley you, Law and Mediation. Glad to have him a part of this broadcast as a sponsor. Elsewhere around the OAC today, Heidelberg is leading Ohio Northern. And that's a, actually, that's a final, 35-14. to 14. Muskingum is uh, losing to Mount Union uh, at halftime, 47 to nothing. 2.55 to go in the fourth. Baldwin Wallace is beating Ohio Northern, 31-21. to 21. And in the fourth quarter, John Carroll is ahead of Heidelberg, 34 to seven. I'm sure what happened there, the end of the quarter, or beginning of the quarter, they call timeout right off the bat. That's a little odd. Yeah, who calls timeout at the beginning of a quarter? I'm a little confused there, but what do I know? Unless they just needed more time to talk about adjustments. So Otterbein down to one timeout. And Marietta, third and two.
Handoff goes over the left side to Zion Jackson Wilburn. That'll be enough for a Pioneer Jackson first down, I believe, Kev. Yes, sir. They gave, they gave, uh, the tackle was they made by the signal Zion yet. Howard. Looked like a first down, but they have not moved the change yet. Everybody in the booth wants a first down, including me. I can't figure that out. Are they going to measure, maybe? The result of the play is a first down. No, there they go. Okay. Chains are moved. Looked like Please Bryce Walker came up on 14, that one. 45, 14, uh, and made a nice ankle saving tackle. So but they had just enough to get the first. Pioneers. So first to 10, Marietta, just starting the uh, fourth quarter here, 14.45 to go on a running clock. In the ball game, Brian Nost, Kevin Copley on CAS 45. Appreciate you being with us here this afternoon. Oh, this has been a lot of fun, really enjoyed it. It's been a beautiful afternoon for football. Beerstra calls his own number and a late flag comes in. I don't know what in the world. It has to be some on the sideline. Flag Personal on foul, the it looks like. Yep. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit, defense, number seven. So defensively, on number on seven, Tyreek Gannell with the late hit. These are things as, as a coach, especially when you're down 36 nothing, you don't want to see. Right. You, know, you want to try to play as clean as you can, even though if you're not playing well, personal fouls. Dumb penalties are just not something you want to watch on film. I'm sure that will be brought up in the Monday morning yeah. the afternoon meeting. Where it's first, down Pioneers. Things have gotten a little chippy here in the second half. Already been uh, one ejection for Marietta. Tuck Nelson, who wasn't even suited up. Um, something happened there on the sideline. and. The official didn't waste any time. Pointed at him, pointed Zion to the locker Jackson room, and he was four. gone. Tackled for a one-yard Howard by that tackle Howard. came in. Came in from the backside, made that play. Second pretty quick. And 11. Jackson Wilborn on the carry there for Marietta. Second and 11 coming up. Wilborn's still playing hard. Yeah, they're, not, they're not laying down by any stretch. Wilburn, the ball carrier over the left side. Cardinals did a nice job there, making Once it third again, down. And got it. back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. No yeah. game. Bobby About 11. Third down, 11. No game. Now this is third where they have not done a superior job on third down. Marriott has been able to convert on third downs frequently. Dre Baldwin uh, checked into the ball game. Number four. Trips to the top of your screen, one man at the bottom. Beerstrand wants to throw. He'll go over the middle. What a great grab right there, John Sierpatowski. They converted again. Third and long. That was a great pass. Good protection. Tyreek Goodell with the stop. And the ball was just put exactly where but it needed to be, right in the middle of the field. Line, it's a first down, Pioneers. So first down, Marietta. Clock continues to tick, 12.35 to go in the ball game. The line's done a nice job of pass protection today for Marietta. Up the middle goes Zion Jackson Wilborn. Zion Jackson Wilborn. Down to the 30 yard in. line. He's quickly having a nice little Bryce second Walker half. Making the stop. Well, and you know, as a coach, I'm sure you like to see Six these other game. guys that are lower on the depth Seven chart get in and get four. some experience in a game like this, right? I mean, you want to get as much experience for your kids as you can. Well, not only resting the guys and keeping them from getting injured in a game that's probably out of hand. You're also getting guys some re valuable reps so next year they can come in and be ready to play. You know, it's not their first rodeo, so to speak. Right. 
Wilburn over the right side. He'll be close to the first down. And, you know, you mentioned um, getting the other guys some rest because, you know, as we talked with Andy before the ball game, once camp starts, there's no injury-free season. Everybody's a little bit, you know, banged up here and there. And so anytime you can get your ones uh, some breathing time and some rest time, that's always good. Yeah. Well, you know, as the coaches, we always talk about the difference between hurt and injured. Everybody's hurt yeah. in the season at some point here or there. You're hurt, you can still play. You're injured, exactly. chances are you can. Right. But uh, getting some valuable rest and be ready for next week is important. Beerster hands the ball off right side, cutting back up through the middle, and touchdown for Vontae Hodges. What a cut in the open field. Man, yeah, watch this. Yeah, watch it again. He stuck his foot in the ground right there. Oh, what a great cut. All he could do is just lunge at his feet. That what a great cut. They've got some talented running backs. Matthew Gossett will attempt the extra points. Matthew Gossett, the freshman, on to attempt the extra point. And this one is up, and it's good. 11.05 to go in the ball game. Pioneers lead it 43 to nothing. You're watching Marietta College Football presented by Sir Speedy Printing in Parkersburg on CAS 45. Let Sir Speedy take your project from idea to execution. Large and small, simple to complex, top-notch printing, custom signage, or a direct mail marketing campaign, the professionals at Sir Speedy are here to help. You'll always get the quality products, personalized service, and experience you've come to expect. So bring us your challenges and we'll work with you to solve them. We're your local resource for creative solutions. Beautiful, inventive, smart, She gets you two coffees. I guess we're back, aren't we? <laughs> we were just uh, we were just um, browbeating our supposed spotter here today. Your wife, who who came along to to be our spotter today, she's she's been playing on Facebook and she did get us coffee. She did get us coffee. That was it was good. delicious coffee. It was good coffee. You did you did good, Carrie. Kev, well, how did that scoring drive go? Devontae Hodges, 26-yard run. Matthew Gossett kick. Ten plays and 81 yards. So a long drive, five minutes and five seconds. Makes it 43 to nothing with about 11 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Now Marriott is now Marriott is a, uh, amassed 456 yards. They actually had sure about $400. That? You sure four, four about yards. that? 456. Okay. I'll take your word for it again. Randy Cochran Jr. on the return. 252 of those on the ground. How's uh, how's Beerster done passing today, Kev? Uh, let's see. He's 13 of 22 for 204. Okay, not a bad day. One touchdown. No. Yeah, not a bad day Very at all. Solid he's, performance. He's he rushed for one too, right? Yeah, I mean that's yes. what. Early on. Yeah. Otterbein still is plugging away. They're, you know, they between the between the forties and maybe even say that between the thirties, they are getting some success. But once they get inside the 30, 35. Marietta Mar tightens up on Marietta's them. Marietta's tightened it up. Hardwin over the middle, almost intercepted. Yep. He just overthrew his receiver. Eric Thurman on the coverage there. But he's had, you know, he's had a decent day. He's 16 for 36. You mean hard one? Yes. Okay. But he has two picks. Yeah. And he had four coming in, so that gives him six on the year. Not, yeah. not the stats you want to uh, write home about, really. No, but, you know, being that their record is 0-3, soon to be probably 0-4, he's probably had been in a position where he's got to throw the ball a lot. And – Especially in the second half. A lot of those might be junk interceptions. Yeah, it could be. And in the second half, people know you're going to throw the ball when you're down. Yep. So they back off. Yep. Go to more of his own coverage and kind of kind of a wait and see type of coverage. A lot of a lot of routes are jumped uh, on that situation where you know you're going to throw the football. Yep. And you see a lot of picks that way on jump routes. 
Ajay is. Cody, the ball carrier there, and it's going to be fourth down, down and six, and they're, of course, going for it. No real uh, choice six. here. And they're pretty much in the situation they're going to knock upon. Hard one, straight drop, looking to throw, and he will overthrow Ajay Cody, and Marietta will take over on downs. At some point, I'm thinking that uh, Andy Waddle is going to uh, bring in his uh, his second team offense. And that may be on this possession right here. It would be, be a good spot to do it in, you know, close to the red zone, inside their territory. So worst case scenario, you go three and out. You know, you're not giving the ball up in your own. Was that on, uh, yeah, Logan, the field. Logan Ratliff is in the ball game, the 6'1 junior. Give him some valuable experience. Yep. New Lexington, Ohio. I think my buddy uh, Kevin Board is the high school coach up at New Lex. What year is he? Logan is a junior. Got a flag down. Looks like a, either an offside or a hold. Officials are discussing. Clear on the far side. Got to be a hold, maybe? Either a hold or motion penalty. Still discussing. Why it's that complicated? Or maybe they're waving it off. Illegal motion, nope. offense number 86, five yard penalty. Took them a while to make that call. Yeah, so they'll call it against Dante Doshio. That brings up first and 15. I can do that math. After the penalty, it's first down and 15. Clock runs at 9.25 to go in the ball game. Ratliff calls his own number and uh, he is sacked in the backfield back to the 48 yard line. He faked the handoff to Vontae Hodges, number 25. And uh, somebody Rat Ratliff pulled it back out and he got clobbered. Somebody missed an assignment there. There was two guys come in untouched. Second and 19 after a loss of four. Loss of four on the play. Second and 19. Ratliff wants to throw, throws out to Hodges in the flat, and he just led him too much. Yeah, he just threw it down, down at his feet, out in front of him. Wasn't a uh, wasn't best throw. Didn't really have a shot at that one. If, he'd got, if he could have got the ball to him, he had a little bit of running room. Yeah. I think it was the right read. Little wheel route out of the backfield. I like that route. But again, he just led him too much. It's not an easy route to throw. Running back is not always uh, not always the best route runner or have the best hands, but if you can connect on it, it's a very successful play. Ratliff drifts to the left, steps up, avoids the sack, and he'll hang on to it. Nice little cut back there by Logan Ratliff at the 40-yard line. He planted his foot and darted back inside and got some positive yards there, close to a first down, a little short. Looked like he wanted to throw the ball, and then, then he just kind of pulled it down at the last second and took off running. Well, I mean, credit Otterbein, some good coverage in the secondary there, and Marietta really wasn't open anywhere. Uh -huh. So Ratliff, good eyes downfield, saw that, tucked it and ran and did a nice job. But Otterbein still has a fourth down here. They can still uh, get Marietta off the field. Obviously, Marietta's going to go for it. Yep. But that was a nice play, nice run, good, good decision. Ratliff, two-step drop over the middle and 
No one home. Yeah, incomplete. Pass was intended Pass for Tony incomplete. Anthony. Or about had good good coverage in that drive. Yeah. They went a little bit of man to man. And uh, they've got good speed in the secondary and an outside backer, so they can stay with Marietta. I'm not sure if Otterbein has subbed or if they still have their first unit in. It looks to me like they still have their first unit in on offense. At their own 33, first and 10, Otterbein. Hard one still in a quarterback. Big game taking place right now in Oregon with Colorado, Deion Sanders and the Buffaloes going into uh, Oregon to take on Bo Nix and the Oregon Ducks. Oregon leads that game in the first quarter, seven to nothing. I think, I don't know. I think this is the weekend where Eric, we see how good Colorado seven. is or isn't. Because they haven't really played anybody, right? I mean, they, they played, yeah, their big rival was Colorado State last weekend. Well, they beat TCU. They did. They did. And that was a shootout. It was. It was. Um, I mean, I'm concerned, I guess, about Colorado's defense because they haven't been able to really stop much of anything. Um, Nebraska didn't give them too much of a, of a, of a game. But it'll be interesting to see. They're already down seven to nothing in the first quarter on the road. I think the line is 21 in that game. Yeah, no, they're 21 in the hole. You're right. But I think if they can keep that close and keep it within seven to ten points, I think it's going to be a win for Colorado. Yeah. One yard gain, second and nine. Got second and nine. Otterbein desperately needs to get in the end zone, try to try to get some positive going out before they get on that bus to go home. They've done some really good things today. They just not have been able to put it together in bunches to put points on the board. West Virginia is leading Texas Tech in the first quarter, seven to three. Uh, that's, that's good. Was his arm going forward? That's the question right there. I don't know what the call is in the field. It looked to me like it was going forward. Yeah, I mean, I don't see, uh, I don't see the, uh, I do see the blue beam back, actually. Well, I can see that on replay. Yeah. Rolling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. Well, I thought his arm was going forward. I think, I, th I don't know. It looked like to me he was going forward when he threw that, but Marietta catches a break there and, and, and gets a fumble recovery on a potential forward pass, but as it stands, it was a fumble. Four, 24 to 17, Marshall winning at Virginia Tech, or at home against Virginia Tech today. Big win for the herd. Heck yeah. Oh, beautiful. They had a hole. Oh, that's going to be a flag. That's going to be a horse collar. Horse collar is Zion Jackson Wilburn goes over the left side. We'll go to the 15 yards on that. That's going to put Marietta down inside the 10. That was a great, great run, but even better blocking up front. I mean, nobody touched him until he got 20, 30 yards down the field. Wilburn, the uh, sophomore. Horse collar is a dangerous tackle, but the young man probably was just trying to save a touchdown. They'll call half the distance to the goal there on the horse collar, so. That's about the 12. 15 yards on top of that run, it was uh, already a good game. It's gonna be a little insult to injury here for Otterbein. They punched in here, 16 minutes or six minutes to go. Logan Ratliff, the quarterback, and they'll hand it right up the middle. That's Wilburn, the ball carrier, across the 10 down to the Jackson nine yard Wilburn line. Colin, Eight of three. Colin Dent did a nice job coming in here, make a nice tackle. Dent. Defensive end. Eight of three, second and seven. Second and seven. Pioneers in no hurry here. Oh. 
Handoff to Wilburn on the right side, and he is drugged down in the backfield. Nice play there. Jackson, nice job Turned of stringing that down the Randy line. Cochran, Randy Cochran Jr. on the stop. That's just the way you teach it on the outside backer. Come up, make him go east and west Lost instead of north and south, and eventually he's going to run out of real estate. He did. Lost a couple there, Kev. It's uh, going to be third and nine. Like you were talking about before, not, but your, your play calls are still a little bit limited because you don't have much room to work with in the passing game. Yeah. Good. I always like a good crossing route here or, or a drag route over the middle. Yeah, I was thinking drag would, would uh, work really well here from right to left. Mm -hmm. That's what they've got got drawn up. They just didn't – they couldn't get it to they, me. Well, uh, it wasn't necessarily a no. drag, but it was it – Well, was there was a guy – the opposite side. There was a guy underneath. So the, somebody did drag across, and the other guy came out the other, other end. Pass is caught, Evan Gandy. Evan Gandy. And that's a first down for Marietta inside the five. They called the right play. They just and threw it to just the outside guy. For a first down. Pioneer. Yeah, go figure. I mean, you had the drag first open on goal. the left side, and they, they ended the up hitting three. Gandy going across the left to right instead of right to left. Wilburn down to the one yard line, touchdown. Touchdown, Pioneers. Zion Jackson. What do you see here, coach? Looks like oh, it's a nice block by the tight end, 87, and they're running up inside of him. Just a little, little power play off the left side, off left end. I'll tell you what, 53 Grant Moore is lucky that he didn't get rolled up on there. He was the lead blocker for Marietta going that left side. And uh, he got uh, he got fallen on, mm -hmm. fell on, fallen on. What's the proper grammar there, Kick Professor? Fallen or fell Four on? Left to go Someone to fell score. on him. Marietta, Nearly rolled 50, him up, which would have been disastrous. Zero. But uh, the good doctor to correct your grammar. I have to. Well, you live with her. She's got to be correcting you a lot more than she corrects me, right? She corrects me all the time. <laughs> She'll be the first to tell you. Especially in grammar. 50 to nothing with 4.22 to go in the ball game. Man, I have really enjoyed having you along uh, today, Kev. You've done a great job for your – you've done this before, but it's been a long time, right? Yeah, it's been a few years. I've been in and out of coaching and did a little broadcasting when I was – on a break from coaching for a couple years. Uh, so I've really enjoyed it. Glad you, glad you asked me to well, come up here and join you. We'll and definitely do it again for sure. Hopefully we can do that. Long as, uh, as long as the missus lets you out to play on the weekends, then we'll. well I'm just getting ready to say, you know, she corrects my grammar, you correct my math. I'm just all, all sort of correctable. <laughs> You're getting it from all sides here today. See, I'm coachable. I take the coach. There you go. See now, I see how you are. It's about getting better every day, Brian. Ajay Gordon from his three-yard line. Mary did a great, Cody, rather. Ajay Cody, my bad. Mary did a great job right there on kickoff coverage, getting down the 11-12-yard 11, 11, line. line. Special Lucas teams <coughs> done a really good job today. Been impressed with their kick coverage team. They've, they've kicked off quite often. Yeah. These guys have gotten some playing time. Well, and Marietta's kicker can uh, Derek Klein. He's got he's got a little bit of leg in that left leg of his. So put a couple in the end zone. Yeah, which is what you want. Offense number 32. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Now we have a penalty as well. Half the distance on Otterbein. Not sure what the call was. Must have been a hold. Yeah. Ball is spotted at the six. First and ten. Otterbein. It's hard starting off. The six yard line down 50 to nothing. I'd really like to see them get something going here. Great rally to the football, great tackle on the open field. And you mean that from a competitive standpoint and not that you're pulling for auto line, oh, absolutely. You know, since we are a Marietta broadcast. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I just you know, get a team who's down 50 to nothing. You want to see them get some yeah, positive. Absolutely. I, I, I work with the coach, and he said, you never want to knock the will out of somebody. New quarterback in for uh, Otterbein, Bo Bercher. He pulls up, calls his own number, and gets across the 15 to the 16, 17-yard line. Looks like a first down. Yep, they're going to give him a first. That was a good pull and run on that one. Get them out of the hole. 
Opens up the playbook a little more. Yep. First and ten, Cardinals. Hurry up offense. Bercher back to pass. And in and out of the hands of the attendant receiver. Lucas Ratliff must have broke that one up. Lucas Ratliff with coverage. Ratliff on the coverage for the Pioneers. Bring up second down. Clock stops, 313 to go in the ball game. Looks like Merritt is doing a little bit of substitution. I was just getting ready to say, yeah, they're they're starting to bring some guys in to get them some reps, some experience. Starters have done a nice job today, and they deserve a little break. Flag, flag comes in. Looks like a hold, maybe. Bercher scrambles. Bercher uh, called his own number. Holden Daly had the tackle. I don't think flag he had much on choice on that one. I think coverage was really good up field, downfield, and uh, he kind of took what they he could get. Personal foul, face mask. Oh, personal foul. Otterbrook catches a break there. On that last drive that uh, Marietta scored on, it was Jackson Wilbur on a two yard run with uh, Clyde on the kick. The drive was five plays of 54 yards with two minutes made it 50 to nothing. Nice out route there from Bircher. He throws that out route very well and That's very dangerous. But he does Aiden throw a nice Snyder. ball. Aiden Snyder on the reception. Jalen Tinsley covering for Marietta. There's no quitting these guys. Nope. Bircher pressure in the backfield and he will go down behind the line of scrimmage. Another coverage sack for Pioneers. He just had nowhere to go with it. And then they kept contain on him on the outside so he couldn't get he couldn't take off running. That's where some of those plays like with Lamar Jackson and the Ravens it <laughs> becomes big gains when they get outside that pocket. But yeah. Pioneers did a nice job of corralling him there and not letting him outside. Loss on the play, it's now second and 14. Marietta will go to two and one on the year and Otterbein will go to 0 and four. Nice pitch and catch there. Pass is complete to Casey Mittendorf, freshman wide receiver. Short game for about a yard, but completion nonetheless. Yep. Blake Barkley making the tackle. They're trying to get something going here in the last couple minutes. Mittendorf in motion to the near side. Flag on the play, and I think oh. there was motion. Yeah, I don't think the receiver got set all before starts. he snapped the ball. Offense. Not all 11 players set before the snap. That's exactly Five right. Indeed. You called it. Quarterback. I, I hate to say it, but I put that on the quarterback. He's got to wait for that guy to get set. Third and 17. Been in this situation a lot. Third and long, fourth and long. And a minute 19 left. Time's running out for them to get something going. Bursher rolls left and Runs out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Stops Strangles. the clock with exactly one minute to go. Did a nice job to avoid the rush. Got outside the edge. Picked up a few yards. Made it made it a little bit more manageable on fourth down here. So I want to remind you the uh, upcoming broadcast schedule for CAS 45. This coming Friday, September 29th, it'll be high school football. The George Washington Patriots will make the hour and 20 minute drive up 77 from Charleston and they will visit the Big Reds of Parkersburg on Friday night, September 29th. You can catch that game on CAS 45. Our next Marietta broadcast is going to be Saturday, October 7th as Marietta plays host to John Carroll. 
Nice catch by Burton again on the little out route comeback. I like I'd like to see this Moderbine just they keep fighting, they keep they keep plugging along no matter what the score is. That's that's what you want to see as a coach in this situation. Yeah. John Carroll beat Heidelberg today, 34 to seven. Baldwin Wallace over Ohio Northern, 31 to 21. Mount Union over Muskingum, 74 to seven. Wow. Makes the Marietta score last week look a little better. Yeah. Heidelberg, Victor at Ohio Northern, 35 to 14. Capital in Wilmington later on tonight at seven o'clock. The only other OAC games on today's schedule. Bircher rolls to his right, wants to throw downfield, has oh, a man. What a catch. What a great catch down to the one yard line. They gotta hurry and stop the clock. One timeout left. Super catch there by Zane Dunning. Yeah, it took a long time to develop, get a man down on the sideline over there. Clock's gonna stop on that. Quarterback did a nice job, but it took a long time to develop. It was a nice post corner route, and the receiver did an excellent job. That's that same catch was down here that he didn't make, jumping, right. jumping backwards over his head. And uh, honestly, was very close to the end zone when he caught it, but I guess he must have hit the ground before he crossed the line. Yeah. Um, now, as a defense, how bad do you want to pitch a shutout here? Oh, you know, it's, it's you know, as a defense coordinator, you never want to give up, never want to give up points. You know, and that's the hard thing too, because in this situation, you're trying to put young guys in, trying to get them some reps, and then the older guys who've been in there and pitched that shutout, they, you know, they get a little salty when you put the points on at the end of the game, and yeah. you know, they're not in there. So, um, I always change my. I, I learned this as I got older. You know, our defensive goals and things like that was always pitch a shutout, but I changed it from pitching a shutout to pitching a shutout with the starters in the game. Yeah. And I think that helped Which a little bit done. of camaraderie. Yes, yes, it definitely. Marietta's done a fantastic job today on defense. But you don't want those young guys getting in there and, you know, you're trying to get them experience, but you don't want them getting in there and getting uh, rattled and, you know, not having a, a good locker room camaraderie with their teammates if uh, they give up any points. Yeah. And, you know, you, sp you talked about locker room camaraderie, and, and it's funny that Andy mentioned that. He said, you know, the seniors are hanging with the freshmen and vice versa. He said this team is one of the tightest teams that he's ever had, and, and you got to love that chemistry that's going on in the locker room with these guys. Well, that's, that's very important. Any sport, any team, really. If you don't have camaraderie with your teammates, if you don't have that care and that love between your players, you know, when the going gets tough and, and situations are tough, like last week, uh, you know, this week it's a little different, but everybody can be happy when it's you know, a big score. But, you know, you got to have you gotta have each other pulling for each other and, and caring for each other. And, uh, and you love that guy to climb up beside you. Second and goal. Second and goal here for the Cardinals. And Bursher can't get into the end zone. They've got one timeout left, and they're trying to get the playoff. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. They do get it off. No, they call it. That's the ball game. Not sure why they didn't take the timeout there. Know. Who knows? Get a, get a score. Anyway, that was an excellent uh, game for Marietta. Yep. They, they very impressed. They came back from uh, a game last week where they had some mistakes and played a very, very tough Mountain Union team. And today, like they say, Fixed some of their mistakes and uh, obviously played much, much better against a, a Otterbein team that, that uh, fought hard. Yeah, they did. They were undermatch, but fought hard. They hung in there the whole game. Well, our final score, Marietta wins it at home here. 50 to nothing. They go to 2 and 1 on the year. Otterbein falls to 0 and 4. We want to thank in Parkersburg. Also want to thank uh, Brian Guthrie and his team in the truck. Did a great job today. We appreciate them very much. Um, and uh, all of the technical aspects that goes into putting this game on. And last but not least, my man, thank you so much. Thank you. Did a great job today. It's good to have you. And um, so we uh, we appreciate you uh, driving down from Glendale to uh, to do this. Once again, our final score, Marietta wins it 50 to nothing. For Kevin Copley, I'm Brian Nost. Have a great day, everybody, and thanks for watching on CAS 45.